deny valid claims because that's how they got to be billion dollar insurance companies. If you've been injured, I'd like to help. Spencer Callahan is the one to see. Call 387 LA filing number 16-7969. WNXX, Jackson, KNXX, Donaldsonville, and WDGLHD2 Baton Rouge. This hour brought to you by Spencer Callahan Injury Lawyers. LA 21-12681. Offices in Baton Rouge. Good morning. It's 7 a.m. on Tuesday, April 9th. Today in Baton Rouge, expect cloudy skies with a high of 84. In hour one of today's show, we'll recap the national championship between UConn and Purdue, and we'll talk a little LSU baseball. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTB underscore ESPN, and watch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel. Hour number one of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge studios, starts now. Let we go! All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the Bench, bench with, with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Tighten it up. You gotta work for them tips. What's happening, y'all? Welcome in Tuesday, April 9, 2024. Tiva, Jake, Alontra, and Taylor hanging out with you today. Uh, what a Tuesday. I mean, I guess. I don't know. Uh, where there's there's a Big Pels Blazers game tonight called a must-have-it. Jake's got the Pelly Red on setting the tone. Uh, LSU's going to play a midweek game tonight. And, um, hmm, I don't know, man. The, the, the midweek games are getting in a real awkward spot where, like, the frustration over the weekends looms so large that I don't even know what to look for tonight, what to be excited about. But maybe we get into it. They'll, 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 they'll play McNeese a bit later. We got a national championship basketball game to recap as uh, UConn may have the best two-year run of any team in college basketball history. Kind of under the radar at a time when... Much of uh, the talk about the men's tournament is, is is the men's tournament kind of being lampooned for not being as popular as the women's tournament. In fact, we'll talk to Coach Kim Mulkey uh, in hour number two as, uh, as we wrap up the season with Coach about this as uh, this was the entire basis of an SNL skit the other night in which uh, Coach Mulkey was parodied. And it was great. Actually, I thought the impression was pretty great. We could play it. But um, I feel like that's when you know you made it, man. If SNL is parodying you, that is a bucket list thing that you can great take to the grave. Uh, like, like you know, yes, this may not be the prime SNL, but that's still one of those uh, kind of immortal type of moments. But, uh, but it yeah, means that everybody kinda. knows who you are enough yeah. for SNL yes. to feel like across the country we're going to do this skit and they're going to know exactly what we're doing here. A hundred percent. Um. So I look. I, I think today's going to be a very fun show. We'll have OTB mailbag. As well. Uh, but yeah, I think we got to start. Well, first off, how's everyone feeling there? Everyone feeling well? Yep, all good. All good? Laundra, Taylor, yeah? Yeah, all good. All right. Uh, yeah, sorry about the eclipse yesterday. Uh, kind of ended up being, uh, you know, well, nothing for us here. Just yeah, cloudy and super, rainy. I had FOMO from that. Bit anticlimactic. Yeah. You know, not that I, you, you know, you know what's funny, and maybe this is just indicative of how spoiled we can be as Americans or maybe our modern society. But, like, I didn't have eclipse glasses, and so I had no real plans to go look at the eclipse, but I'm still mad that I couldn't, you know? Like, I probably would have chosen not to, but it makes me angry that the rain and the clouds ruined it. And uh, I I thought it was very funny when The Advocate had a headline quoting a student saying, typical Louisiana. It is. You know, just way to go, dude. Can't wait till Jeff Landry comes out and tells us that this is LSU football's fault for not going on the field for the national anthem. And I, I know, you, Alondra, you're probably going to tell me this is Puxatani Phil's fault. If it is. No, no. If it was springtime. No. Uh, well, no, spring, you know, that's when it rains. Yeah, like it rains. So uh, quite literally, no. No, yeah. we're sitting here yesterday. I forgot about the eclipse completely. Really? Like completely? I'm sitting there like After 1.30. the show, even though we talked about yeah. it? Yeah, oh. sitting there like 1.30, and like a couple people are like, hey, I'm going downstairs. Like, Yo, are y'all going outside? I'm like, it's raining. No, I'm not going outside. <laughs> Why are you going outside? They're like, the eclipse. I was like, I forgot all about it i do love the eternal optimists in which hope springs eternal the 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 people that still stared up at 
the gray, overcast, I muddled did. sky, hoping to see something. I tried to look. I had the glasses on and everything. You couldn't even see the sun. <laughs> no, I know. So how were you going to see the eclipse? Well, I didn't know like how <laughs> it's gonna cloudy be even it more was hidden. outside because I was inside of the eclipse. all day. But yeah, I was. I, was, I, was I had working, FOMO. So I, my fa- I didn't even try. My family in Texas yeah. was sending me pictures, and it looked super cool. And I was, I had really bad FOMO. Uh, but we made it. Congratulations, right? There was some talk to the world may end. Um, I missed that talk. Not yet. Yeah, I don't know. You know, the internet yeah. tends to get into such things. Uh, the internet also is celebrating UConn right now. As uh, the college basketball season comes to an end last night with a dominant 15-point national championship win for UConn over Purdue. Very exciting first half. Felt like old school basketball, right? Not a ton of threes, couple of yep. bigs just banging down low. Big old white boys bumping meat, solid upperclassmen. It's like warm apple pie there for a minute uh, until it wasn't. Because, again, UConn may have just had the most dominant March Madness two-year run in history. Listen to some of this, guys. So they're back-to-back champs. And for the second year in a row, um, they won every game by double digits. Yep. Uh, they had the largest point differential in history last year. They won their six games by an average of 20 points a game. This year, they won their six games by an average of 23 points a game. They have won 12 tournament games in a row by double digits. That is a mathematical anomaly. That should be impossible. And Jake, to me, the most impressive part about yesterday uh, was the game plan and the execution of the game plan. Basically just saying, look, Edie, you can get yours. We ain't going to let you shoot any threes. And it worked to perfection. It absolutely did. And I was wondering how they would handle Zach Edie because every team that Purdue has played has, has handled him in a different way. Like going back to the Gonzaga game, it was like they tried to take him out of the game. They were trying to double team him and the other guys made their shots. And so Smith and Lawyer and Jones, they made their threes. And so Gonzaga never made an adjustment really. And so that's why they lost the game by 12 points. Yeah. Well, you could tell UConn was like, hey, that's fine. Look, Zach Eady can get his because mm-hmm. they're going to be twos, not threes. Yep. And these other guards, these three guards that are really good, I mean, you had Smith that came into the game. He's shooting like 43% from beyond the arc. So they were like, look, we're not going to allow that to happen. We're not going to get beat by the three. And UConn's done it all season long. I mean, to win every tournament game by double digits two years in a row, I don't know of a more dominant run. And in a time and era – when it's harder to win than ever before. Yeah, that's the other thing, right? So your last back-to-back, you got it all the way back to 06, 07. Yep. And those incredible Florida teams with Horford, Noah, and um, – Oh, who's the third? Brewer. Yeah. Uh, and, and as Hurley talked about after the game, maybe UConn's even more impressive because it's two different versions of UConn. That yep. was those big three back-to-back years. Yeah, they're the same then, starting five, and both of those were Florida. Well, and then you got to go back to, what, 91-92 Duke? And is it actually Hurley's brother on that staff? Bobby, yeah. Or is the head coach? He's but like, playing. Oh, he's playing. Okay. Yeah, Bobby, yeah. Um, but then you got to – so, so again, yes, to Jake's point, in the modern era, what UConn just did should be next to impossible. And, again, to go back to the game plan, um, it's a testament to research, film, and scouting because what UConn found was that in wins or losses for Purdue, um, Edie still got his. Yep. And that the overall offensive efficiency didn't really uh, fluctuate based on stopping Edie or not. The real key was stopping Purdue around the three-point line. They were the second-best three-point shooting team in the nation coming in in the tournament. Uh, they had attempted 15 threes every game, and I think three games they attempted over 20. They attempted seven and made one, right? Um, they let Edie go for 37 to 10. Didn't matter at all. Now, I think to make this work, you do have to play very clean offense, right? Yeah. Because if you're sloppy and you turn the ball over, if you can't create second chances, uh, then Edie can lean on you enough to overcome you. But UConn held up their end of the bargain on that side. I mean, the constant movement of that offense, they highlighted it after the game. But the analysts did a great job of showing how they're just – it was it was like a whirlpool. Just You could almost feel Purdue fighting against what like the undertow – and getting exhausted as they're being dragged out into the water to see if they could swim. And in the end, I mean, the the Huskies are just dominant. And now it's six championships, back-to-back, trying to be the first three-peat since John Wooden 
and company back uh, in what? What was that, the 60s and 70s yeah. when they run seven in a row? Uh, also for UConn T, they have a little bit of LSU football. They've done it with three different head coaches. Yes. Calhoun yes. and Ali and now Hurley. So that to me, in the last 25 years, you win that many titles and it's with three different coaches. That shows that you are a program. Now you got to have a great coach and Hurley's been that. He's pushed the right buttons, pulled the right strings. But that is like when we talk about blue bloods and we got into this yesterday on off campus because Kentucky's open. It's like we never really put UConn in there. It's always Carolina, Duke. Kentucky, yep. Kansas. Like, mm-hmm. UConn needs to be in that conversation. 100%. When you win that many titles, you have that many great former and current NBA players, you've done what they've done. They might not have the long history that those programs have, but the recent history, it's not even close. Like you got to combine all those other teams' championships to match up with UConn. Yeah, they are. Um, it's unquestioned. And I love the LSU parallel there because uh, LSU as well, while, while maybe a bit more historical success than UConn. Not that much more. Both teams kind of rising uh with the new millennium, right? With 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 the coming of the uh of the aughts, the two thousands, if you will. And uh both teams look like they're here to stay. We'll talk a little LSU football later in the program as uh, I want to get into LSU spring ball. Maybe some of the names you should be watching out for on Saturday, who who kind of the breakouts on this team could be. But yeah, UConn now third all time with six titles. And only six schools have ever gone back to back. And again, I, I don't even I think that number is even a little juiced because again, this is just the third time since the nineties that somebody has gone back to back. That's over thirty years, y'all. So shout out to the Huskies, man. That was dominant. It was a really boring second half, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh but you know, it, it it finishes off maybe the best run that we've we've ever seen. Yeah, and you looked at the line before the game, it was six and a half and he was like, I don't believe that's even going to to come close to it. But it's like you almost wanted it to because you wanted a good game. You wanted it yeah. to be competitive. But you started to look at the individual matchups and, and Klingon being able to match up really one for one with Edie. I mean, Klingon's the much better NBA prospect. Now, I'm not an NBA draft uh, analyst. I have no idea. But Zach Edie might maybe get picked in the lottery. Like it's going to be a fringe. He's probably going to get picked somewhere between 15 and 18. Like Klingon's going to get top three. Well, and and it's uh it's it's one of those deals where yes, Edie got his, but they 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 never let it be easy on him. And when he did start to struggle a little bit because of how hard they were banging down low, uh, I think I think they had nearly fifteen minutes where Edie scored once, mm-hmm. and I think they only scored maybe like two points, four points in that time, and that's when they went from winning the game to then down by nine. So yeah, I mean, look again. Incredible game plan and incredible execution out of out of UConn and Dan Hurley and everybody in that program deserves a uh, big tip of the cap because uh, it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around how dominant this team was. Anybody tell me where Dan Hurley came from? Like where was his last head coaching job before he got to UConn? Akron. Taylor? I could I actually couldn't tell you. I, mean, I thought I knew, but I, I don't. Guess. Um, I mean, it's going to be somewhere smaller. Yep. Wheatley. Early Dickinson. I really actually love all three of your answers, but they're not right. Stetson. No. Laundry. I have no idea. UC Irvine. Let's see. I'm looking it up. Rhode Island. Oh. Mm. So in, the, in that area. Yeah, hey, no, he's another, from the Northeast. He's a Jersey good. guy from the Northeast. So, like, I bring it up because he ain't going to Kentucky. No, Everybody why like, yeah. Why would he? He's like, well, also, UConn's he's better from Kentucky. there. Like, he's always been in the Northeast. UConn's better than Kentucky. There's not as many headaches at UConn than Kentucky. You're going to have all the resources, obviously, to go win a national championship. Why in the hell would I go into the cesspool that is the Big Blue Nation in basketball? Well, I mean, even Nate Oates just said no to Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. No, you you make a good point because like you have all the benefits at UConn that you do Kentucky, but none of the scrutiny. Uh, yeah, 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 yes, yeah. You like don't what, have... what is what does Kentucky have that UConn doesn't? UConn's got more success. Yeah, I um, and they get they're gonna. I'm sure they have all. I you know I don't know if this is on my head, but I'm sure they have all the facilities. They have all the school support, well, obviously, and, and they might... all the monetary investment can go into the basketball programs. Well, and that's the thing. They might pour even more into basketball because their women's program's so good. I mean, with UConn men True. and women's basketball, I mean that's king. Yeah, and you don't have to deal with like Mark Stoops winning nine games and then being yeah. like, "I'm the man." Ah! Kentucky football school confirmed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Uh, even though I really hope this blows up in NATO's face and him and Alabama end up sucking next year and then it all like goes sour and he's like, God, I wish I would have gone to Kentucky. Um, only time will tell. Yeah. Somebody tried to say Alabama, top three job in the nation. No. Stop deriding Tuscaloosa, well, dude. No, no, no. Like They said no. top ten. They said for sure top ten, probably top five, maybe top three. No, Oates has done a great no. job there, but the job itself's not that great. No. Just I because agree. you've had success. And I'll tell you what, he's got his work cut out for him. He's losing Grant Nelson and Mark Sears, who carried that team at times, so... We're going to see what I mean, he's got next look, year. They've built a, a really nice program. I'm not throwing too much shade at him, but to say it's a top three, top five, it, we'd have to have a conversation about top ten. It's a prisoner of the moment take uh, for sure. Uh, I mean, that, off the top of my head, you know, the Kentucky, Duke, Carolina, UConn, Kansas, Houston. Yeah. I like, guess better than any of those? Uh, no, I mean, I don't. I, I, don't I think Arkansas is a better job. They've had more success in basketball. They pour more money into it. Uh, one of our big questions yesterday Bud was, Walton. yeah, outside of Kentucky, Arkansas probably cares the most about basketball, right? They're in up the there. SEC, Ten- Ten- yeah, yeah, in the SEC. Tennessee's up there. They, they yeah, like their but, basketball but, program. Uh, but Auburn has been forced there, I, I feel like, <laughs> because, like, yeah, it's kind of there's so little bad. else yeah. to fall back on right one. now, but, because but not traditionally. Like, yes. if Tennessee, and somebody said, you know, this is the example that we used yesterday, if Tennessee had, like, a marquee basketball matchup, but they were also hosting the number one five star quarterback on campus. What would the message uh, well, be? Well, they're they're about? concerned with football more. For yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah. So that's my point. Like yeah. Arkansas, you can maybe argue. And to baseball. be fair, Arkansas has kind of been forced there a bit yeah. uh, as well. But yes, yeah, Arkansas for sure. Probably if they're not too, uh, they're they're in the conversation yeah. there or, or, or vying for two. Uh, Dan Hurley was a high school basketball coach less than fifteen years ago. Damn. Good on you, Dan. At St. Benedict's Prep. In New Jersey. Uh, it'd be so crazy to be one of his, like, old players from the high school level to see yeah. your coach go on to do that. The, to, to do that yeah, you're still, yeah, you're in your, yeah, you're like 30s. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. And, and you probably, like, thought he was kind of a slappy at times or something. Or maybe you loved him. Maybe you like, yeah. thought your, he was your awesome. Your mouth is off know. to him. You're like, man, coach don't know nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like my, my little brother's high school football coach was Doug Peterson. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. It's kind of the same thing. Uh, that Super is Bowl the same thing. winning coach. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, All right, when we get back, I want to get to the Jay Johnson show last night. Uh, What did Jay have to say about last weekend and where the team goes from here? Let's get into it in a midweek game coming up. Keep it locked right here on OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. All-star Toyota of Baton Rouge. Go there today if you need a car. New, used, where you still get the warranty on the Toyota Soda Red Used Cars is great. Get a great deal as well. Um, maybe on a lease? Look, uh, maybe get in an accident and you need a body shop. Service Center. Well, I'll start Toyota Service Center. It's right there on the airline in Goodwood. Very conveniently located, my friends. Uh, also, all makes and models are welcome. Okay, does not have to be all star does not, or does not have to be a Toyota. You're good to go. Don't have to be all star uh, You just bring in um, your, your uh, insurance claim and they get a free professional estimate. And experience the excellent customer service, the text updates throughout the, the process, keeping you abreast of the situation no matter what. Um, it's just the best in every regard for all things vehicular. All Star Toyota Baton Rouge, all Toyota Baton Rouge.com. Vehicular, I like that. Vehicular. Is that a word? Yeah, vehicular is definitely a word. Definitely. Work. I like it. You'll like All Star. Check them out online. You All-Star will. All Star Toyota Baton Rouge.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. For those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. 
What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal. Matt Moscona inviting you to join us for Tuesday's AFR, powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. LSU back on the practice field. We'll get your football practice report and baseball Tigers trying to get right against McNeese. Join us 3-6, 1045 ESPN, Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What's happening, y'all? Welcome back, OTB. Jamie says, my lady Tigers blew another game last night. I'm sick. Uh, yeah, brutal, brutal loss uh, for the LSU softball team if, if you missed it. This is one of those that potentially sticks with you and festers with you, especially knowing coaches, uh, you know, uh, relationship with Florida going into Gainesville. Look like they had the series win wrapped up. They're about five, one in the sixth. Uh, and they end up losing in the eighth, seven to six On a strikeout. Yeah. Well, and, and so, so all five runs that were scored in the eventual loss, all of them unearned. Yeah. Including as Jake's alluding to there, you had a strikeout to in the eighth inning, got your drops it. Uh, errant throw to first, and you lose the series. That's a uh, that's a bad boy. That's a bad boy right there. Um, all right. Uh, look, I want I want to get into Jay Johnson. Uh, speaking of maybe struggling teams on the diamond, all the softball's not really struggling. That's yeah. just a painful loss. They're doing great. Um, let's start. This is uh, from the Jay Johnson show last night, and let's start here. Uh, let's just go to the list here. Let's start with Johnson one. I think it's different, you know, playing at LSU, and that's a good thing because you have so many people that care about our program, that care about the players in our program, that want to see the players in our program succeed. But if they're that passionate about that side of it, they're going to be passionate, you know, when a player or the team is not playing well. And trust me, I'd way rather have a little bit of uh, adversity, criticism, and have 13,000 people show up and support us like uh, our fans did this weekend. And uh, it was a great environment. Uh, the crowd was phenomenal on, on Friday night and, and really disappointed we didn't close that game out. All right, so that's, that's, that's a little pushback uh, from Coach against some of the narrative that we were espousing yesterday, right, that uh, maybe the crowd was one of the disappointing parts of the weekend. Um, but, but yeah, look, I, I agree with the sentiment that, 
you have to take the good with the bad in any of this stuff. And you want to have the feeling of being a star. You want to be beloved and you got to eat, be noticed and everything else. Like you have to accept that when things are going bad, then obviously it's going to come with more criticism, more pressure, and just, just a lot more on your, on your shoulders for the players and coaches. Uh, here's Johnson on why he used Griffin Heron out the bullpen instead of maybe starting him for one of these games. You want to win the ones that you can. And if you look at the game on Friday and Saturday and how it matriculated, if he's not sitting there, you don't feel that great right now about winning that game on Thursday. I've always you know, had a lot of success with having one of your better pitchers come out of the bullpen. He's done a good job of that. Hey, we've won the, all three SEC wins were games that he's come in and had extended relief, and the other one uh, was the game that we got to extra innings against Arkansas where he hit his pitch count at 70, I mean, 71, I think, he threw that game. So if you go 71 pitches or 75, if he's really rolling, that only gives you five innings, and then you still have to figure out four-plus innings of what you're going to do in the game that he starts. I'm not taking that off the table that we might not do that at some point, but right now um, – you know, when the guy's pitched in all three games that you've won in league play, uh, I think that's where he has his most value. Yeah, I mean, look, Jake, that that makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. Uh, you 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 have to you you have to scrabble together, just cobble together SEC wins at this point, and Griffin Herring is your best path to do so, especially when your pin is so weak. Uh, again, maybe the 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 most interesting domino effect of last weekend is the error at short in the sixth on Thursday, which makes you have to use Herring instead of being able to save him. And it's what Johnson talked about after the loss on yeah. Saturday. But but it, it just it, it it starts a an awful combination that means that you don't have him for game number two. And then Ackenhausen, who I still really like, right? I'm not out on Ackenhausen. I'm betting on Ackenhausen to uh to be uh not maybe as dominant as Herring, but to be that second guy that can also give you extended relief and maybe close out the game. But here is uh, Coach Johnson speaking on Ack, hitting that batter, and then giving up the two-run shot. I feel like Nate's one of our best competitors, and I think had we been able to get a little deeper into the game without having to bring him in the inning before, um, it gave, would have given him a better chance of, of success. But uh, that wasn't the case. And, um, you know, a guy hits a two-run home run late in the game. You have to tip your hat, and that's what they do. They didn't give in many at bats with two strikes, and that hit by pitch – was really the difference because if it's a solo home run, it's a tie game. But that hit by pitch made it where they they took the lead. God, and and it just hurts so bad because at that point you were into that counting down the outs mode. Yeah, it went in the eighth inning. It's always when it happens in your head, right? Six outs to it's always six outs in baseball. You know, easy six outs are to get, yeah. and it never ends up being the case, dude. Um, here, look, like it's a great two strike approach by the by the Vandy player. Yeah. though. I mean, went the opposite way. Hell, it didn't even look like in the replay. I'm like, how in the world did they get out of here? Where he hit it on the bat? But it's still just disappointing too, because Vandy no power coming into this series and then winning that. Uh, Plenty of bad news. Game. Yeah, exactly. Certainly in the last game. Um, Jay Johnson maybe trying to explain some of the struggles of the plate for LSU in conference this season, uh, calling SEC pitching the best he's ever seen this year. It's, it's very uncharacteristic. Uh, one of the things we want to do is do a good job against a starter and get into the bullpen. I will say across the board in my three years, and we're only four weekends into this thing, I do think uh, the, the pitching talent in the SEC is as, a, is as good as it's been. Uh, McIlvain, the, the, the left-hander that they brought in, you know, in late in Friday's game, you know, up to 96 miles with a fastball, good breaking ball. And, uh, Made it made it tough on us, and we had a couple chances, and it's just stringing that third at bat together uh, to to get a run or two across the board. Like we're gonna have to do that to take some pressure off our pitching staff until those guys pitch well enough to finish a game without the offense doing that. Uh, and then and then you know after the game on Saturday after the series loss, uh, John's press conference about five minutes. Right, it is a pretty kind of terse affair. So here's how he kind of looks at Game Three after a. Uh, couple of days to ruminate and process it. I have a different opinion of this Saturday's game. I think Carter Holton was outstanding against us and made it really, really difficult against us, and we did not match up. Like, the, the pitching that we put out there did not match up with the pitcher we were facing, and they, they beat us. Like, they beat us up on, on Saturday. And as far as, like, you know, the, the mental game and all of that, 
um, you know, that's – again, we want to be strong at that. But if you don't bring it, like, that's not an excuse to, to win. So I don't think it's relevant. I think Vanderbilt beat us beat us up on Saturday. It's pretty interesting, Jake. I mean, basically saying just Vandy's more – has more depth. Yeah. And is better there. Yeah, I talked about the matchups and it being one-sided because you can't go out there and roll the same lineup and, and bullpen and starting pitcher that they can. Um, Which I mean, it's fa- that's factual. Yes, yeah. I mean, we've seen it now, and we talked about it. And Taylor told us the numbers. I don't forget. You know, it was like forty-six to seventeen, or what it was, whatever it was. You being outscored in the last game of a series. So three it's not rules. just Vanderbilt. No, and that's a three-run rules. And uh, so combining the fact that we already knew you've been sucking at game threes, and then they were saving their ace for game three, it's another reason why you knew you needed the first two so desperately. Uh, here's maybe the biggest question that will determine this LSU season. Here's Coach Jay Johnson on how this bullpen can improve. Yeah, I think I, I've mentioned this before, you know, when you're struggling, I think simplifying is a really good way to go about getting to execution. And so kind of my directive this week has been like, okay, what are the one or two things that each pitcher does well? And let's really focus on being good at those. You know, if we can't execute – a certain thing that's good to get the hitter out. Let's just stick with the pitcher's strengths, maybe split the plate a little bit more so we're not chasing the count to where we have to give in and throw a fastball, you know, those types of things. It, it really comes down to execution. So picking what the guys are good at and really have them focus on those couple of things. Now, when you talk about the starters, mm. it's a little more complex than that. You have to have a third pitch. I think as a staff as a whole, you know, really developing – third pitches change-ups as, as, as a way to get hitters off the fastball is going to be really critical for, for guys' success going forward. And that's baseball thing. That's not like an LSU thing. That's that's pitching and, and winning pitching. It's kind of interesting, man. Sounds like to me there's still a bit of a disconnect uh, between Yeski and this staff just kind of maybe learning it top to bottom and how best to employ – uh, the arms and and what pitch like like he said I mean he basically said we we need to do a better job of of thinking for our pitchers and highlighting their strengths and kind of hiding their weaknesses. Um, that can yeah. you do that going into the fifth that's weekend? What, that's what of I was SEC just play? about to say that that that's something that after four weekends of SEC play, I'm not sure that you're going to be able to turn that around and get that mm. done. And and you can't, and Jay knows this, and he would tell you that, like it's hard in any sport to develop within the season. And certainly it's hard to develop within the SEC. Now, it can get done. In rare cases, we've seen a player that started uh, you know, at the very bottom and he continued to get better and he developed these things and by the end, but now that you're four weekends in, can it happen? Is there enough time even for the rare case of developing within the season? That's why you work so hard in the offseason. That's why you do all the things yeah. in the offseason. So you build that up to use it in the season. Well, uh, as we all know, it's going to get tougher before it gets easier. Uh, you got McNeese tonight, uh, and then you're traveling to Lindsey Nelson in Knoxville to go take on the Tennessee Volunteers. Tony V and company. Tony V and his little PP. Let's see. What the Tigers can do this weekend. Uh, I all right. forgot about that. That was yeah. good. That was a good I one. don't think I'm going to do one of those this weekend. No. Nah. I know I normally do them. And, and to be fair, the first one I ever did, I did when I pretty much we all knew they were going to lose in that super regional. You did. Uh, I'll give you credit. Like but, it was, LSU was a big underdog. But I, the vibes are just not yeah. right. The vibes are just not right right now for that. So uh, we're going to say we're going to save that for like SEC tournament. Okay. You know, like like yeah. when when else she's got some juice back and mm-hmm. and and maybe or, or maybe like you run into them in, in in the NCAA tournament somewhere along the line, then then we'll then we'll go full board again, but not after four series losses in a row. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that. Uh, do, do, is there like any go around the room real quick? I know we got a break. It's like any pitcher that you think could do what we're talking about develop right now and in three series from now. Is a completely different player, pitcher wise. I mean, to me, it would be more about some guys refining their form. Like we saw Thatcher Hurd do it last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like Gavin Gidry still has, should have more of a role to play in some of these high leverage. I just go back to all the names that we saw do it in Omaha, and and like uh, you, you have to hope that and, and st- like those guys have regressed, and, and hopefully they can refine whatever they had at the end of last year. 
I think that was my thing, too, is, like, we've seen some of these guys go out there and execute and do a really good job. Yeah. It's just what, what happened to it. I don't know. Yeah. And that's where, you know, people point to the coaching change. And, again, like I said yesterday, that's not 100% correct, I'm sure, but it's also not nothing. Uh, and, again, it's maybe even less to do with Yeski and more to do with how good Wes Johnson was. But, um, like I said yesterday, too, man, I just want to see who's going to fight, and I ain't going to stop watching. Wait too damn long all off season. For these ten wonderful weekends mm-hmm. that we get to celebrate SEC baseball, and so uh, we out you. Let's see who is gonna uh, who's gonna ride with. All right, when we get back, uh, what do we got on the docket here? We could talk a little. Uh, I got, I mean, I got recruiting tidbits. We got a little spring football. There's a ton to get into. Keep it locked right here on Off the Bench. Off the Bench with Hester and T Bob. You want the most complete roof and company? You want Coleman Roof. Coleman Roof and Construction, go to ColemanRoof.com. This is from uh, Teresa Clegghorn, uh, my neighbor, who just had his roof repaired by Coleman, recommended them to me. They performed a brilliant job on my flat roof. God, these, these reviews keep, keep moving. Um, ah, ah, whatever. I, okay, I was reading a review, but like the website keeps, like, keeps moving. It was a five-star review. They were incredibly happy. Uh, remember, any any type of roof, Coleman got you any size job, commercial or residential, um, anywhere in Louisiana, as well as the Gulf South region. They're the absolute best Coleman roof in construction. Um, you could actually, you know, you got to be quick with the trigger, but you can kind of go back. We needed a new roof before winter since we had hail damage. They were able to do it right away for us. They also worked with my insurance. Cannot recommend them enough. That comes from Laura on their website. Check out all those reviews. 4.8 right there. ColemanRoof.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Elevate brand visibility, ignite customer engagement with the power of radio and digital advertising combined. Guarantee Digital Media brings the two together as a trusted media partner in Louisiana for nearly a century. Claim your free digital audit at GuaranteeMedia.com. best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com. Or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com.
Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today. Or customize your next vehicle just the way you All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. And I'm hearing what you say, but I just can't make you sad. Just trying to make everybody even more sad about LSU baseball, Londra. No, I actually <laughs> forgot how slow this song was. <laughs> In my head, it was a lot faster than this. Just put hey. on some Chapel Road. The, the chorus is faster. In no, her, I see. Like, it's a bop. Good. <laughs> and heard this song in forever. Here we go. See, that's a, that's that's, that's what quicker. I was looking for right there. I, in my head, it's 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 like it's too late to qualify. <laughs> Talking about the tournament, like LSU baseball's got to get it together, dude. Got to get it. This together. might Not be to. our this might be our theme song as we try to get them to qualify for. Yeah. Uh, Not qualify, but just reach it. I know. Yeah. Come on, baby. Come on. We just got to make the tourney, baby. Make the tourney and get frisky. That's all we're looking for. I mean, 13 SEC. This is sad, but 13 SEC wins gets you in now. Maybe borderline. It's usually 14 is like the number that okay. you try to get to. Did Auburn make it like 13 and 17 maybe last year? Yeah, they were like a... Three or four seed in some regional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, here's the hope. The that Hattiesburg one. You can, God. There you get there. Uh, um, oh, we had to go to Hattiesburg two years ago, right? Ugh. Yeah. Wait, so the advocate right now is having a uh, a giant reader's poll on the best crawfish in Baton Rouge. Started 24. They're down to 12. There's a few on here that I haven't seen. So there's crawfish on the go, Sammy's, Louisiana Boilers, Tony Seafood, I heard all those, and there's Willie's, Smoke Boil, Lakeside Daiquiri's, University Seafood, Craven Crawfish, B&T Seafood, Ranty Maltabano Seafood, and the Juicy Seafood Restaurant. I really like the name Juicy Seafood Restaurant. Wait, I'm sorry. I tuned out for like two seconds. What are we talking about? Just a bunch of different crawfish spots in Baton Rouge. Oh, I still okay. I'm like... I have not had any crawfish, man. Really? Me yeah, I, I saw this this morning. I texted my wife. I was like, what are we doing, dude? I've never been this far into spring and haven't... Uh, suck some heads so I'm, I'm, I'm looking to change that uh this weekend but i want to try one of these spots on the list like i guess i only bring it up to know if try y'all all do, do y'all have a favorite spot well i got that kind of money bro <laughs> snaps <laughs> snaps didn't get renewed dude. i, I mean, can what tell am I you supposed to do, dude? I, on that list, okay you will get one crawfish meal <laughs> on that list you mentioned willie's yeah so that is a full sit down restaurant kind of like sammy's that just okay. crawfish as well and the whole restaurant's pretty good okay it's on a uh, coursey like you get off at Sherwood. You by take a the ride on the course. East. Yeah, right by Chimes. Yeah. Okay. Right. right oh like, yeah. I know, I know, I know right what you're talking about. Yeah. Pretty good. After we put our, our cat down, we went to Chimes and washed down her sadness with a couple of big old beers and uh, mm, love that fried bow tie pasta. Oh, so good. So fat. Go with the artichoke. They have dip. these yeah. boudin egg rolls that are so good. Who doesn't love a boudin egg roll? Oh, love Couldn't a boudin be me. egg roll. And like, and like a little sweet Asian sauce. Yeah. A little dipping sauce. Didn't yeah. you like just walk out yesterday and you just screamed, I want boudin. Yeah. 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 Walking back into the studio, it just like hit me. I haven't yeah. had a good boudin link in far too long as well. Um, Country Corner is good. I did. I did have. Uh, so uh, quite the spaghetti last night with uh, i've been buying my noodles from canatella's make those fresh noodles and ooh boy them things is fine you have good down sandwiches street, there. Yep, right down yeah right yeah, yeah yeah i got a little muffalata yesterday yeah. as well which uh I'm, I'm going through one of those taste buds changing situations where all of a sudden i kind of like olives i don't love him i don't love him but i don't actively hate him and on the muffalata yesterday i was like okay i get it I get this now. This 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 flavor combination is now making sense with my brain. On Mondays they have a special. You get half a muffalata and an Italian like pasta salad. Yeah, I saw that. I saw Good. that. I didn't want the pasta salad. I went in the mood. Ooh, I love pasta. I love no, I do. I do as well. Salad. I do as well. Like I just went in the mood. Yeah, they do a little Monday special. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, if we're talking grocery stores, I should give a uh, a shout out to my homies at Rouse's uh, because you can get boiled crawfish there, boys, four ninety nine a pound. Whoa. That's a good deal. So, good Shout out, out Rouse's. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, thought of Joe Dirt. That's a deal right there. <laughs> That's a deal right there, bro. Uh, Randy Multibano Seafood. Where is that? Does anybody know? Uh-uh. Or the Juicy Seafood Restaurant? 
I'm gonna try somewhere on this list. Between. I just feel I look. I, I I haven't had crawfish either. I know some of those restaurants. Some I don't. I feel like if T. Bob A. Bear is going to go to anywhere on that list, juicy seafood yeah. has to be the it, winner. I mean, it definitely percent. popped out uh, from a naming convention that, and then Randy okay. Altamano. I got it. The juicy seafood restaurant used like... to be Great Wall on College Drive. Oh, I'm yes, looking yes, at the picture oh, of it right now. Okay. I think it's by now that just confirms it. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah. many hours as you spent at Great Wall. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to walk in and just get hit with Great a Wall. rush of nostalgia. I used to love Great Wall. I mean, you're going to be Norm walking into Cheers. We used to, I'll <laughs> never forget like freshman year. I don't know if it was in between two days. That doesn't sound right, but it's after some sort of practice. And we went and uh, all the O-line went there and I ate so much. Uh, I physically could not drive, so I got in my car and just leaned my seat back and went to sleep. Slept for like an hour, and then I was finally had digested enough food to be able to operate a motor vehicle once again. I'm going to a boil this weekend. I'm really excited. Well, congrats to but you, Alondra, for having friends, yeah. okay? Um, even though I don't know how you don't listen to more Chapel Room. Yeah. Uh, when we get back, let's close out hour number one of OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Okay. Multiple bottles on Florida. Maybe you're going to check it out. Uh, you should check out K to Z window coverings. They may not do crawfish, but they do do window coverings. How could you have guessed? Do do. Uh, you need window coverings that wow. Go to K T O Z blinds.com. Have Brandon Bound Art Barton out to your home. Get that free uh, estimate. And, and, and it goes beyond just like a, a pricing estimate. He's going to walk through your home, learn exactly how the sunlight interacts with your home at every different portion of the day, and whether it's something for like an outdoor living space, uh, master bedroom, big kids room, theater room, whatever, you take your home to the next level. And they got every price point. So, starter home, home of your dreams, they got something for you, k to zblinds.com. Go to the website, check out what T-Bob's talking about, but also we just encourage you to have them come check out your space because they are going to know your space and know it like in five minutes. Inside, outside, does not matter. Sometimes they can help you with both with just you know, one situation like they did with me, K2ZBlinds.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the JimsFirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the JimsFirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink 
are a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What's happening, y'all? Welcome back, OTB. I got no problem with Dustin Crawfish, okay? I'm not, this is a bit like a hot dog and sandwich conversation, so I don't want to get too into it, but I think, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I've had very good Dustin Crawfish. I don't think I ever, I've very ever had it, uh, but a hot dog is a sandwich. It's a protein between two pieces of bread. I mean, again, you know, the, the debate reg- rages ever on. Is it two pieces of bread, though? I mean, or is it it's one not piece one. Of bread down the middle? It's not one. It's not one piece of bread? No, it's separated. B- to a point. I mean, it's... it's separated. You can it's, make it two pieces. If I open a book, is that two books? Okay, I mean, they're still for, g- for, joined at the spine. For that point, though, I a lot of poke shops you go to, <laughs> the bread's not cut all the way. It's closed Dude, on listen, one true. half. I can't not believe that we just sincerely yeah, hopped into listen, a hot dog and sandwich. <laughs> listen, you knew as soon as you started bringing this up that we can't help ourselves. Uh, that's actually a really, I hate Taylor, but that's a great point. Well, well, sorry. No, so yeah, like yes. like if you go, any of like the, the walk-in food point, like Subway, Jimmy John's, hey, Jersey Mike's, all that. Your right. point was they, uh, on, speed it up. They just split it in half and put it on there. It's not separate. Sandwich. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, a hot yeah. dog. That's what I'm saying it's a good point that 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 if we count that as a two pieces of bread, that may maybe a hot if dog. If you don't is. think that a hot dog is a sandwich, you're an idiot. Yeah, T. Bob. Um, you don't think a hot dog is a sandwich? I have. I no, thought we were all on the same page. I here. have. Uh, I have no passion for the debate. This. Is- uh, sure, sure, it's a sandwich. Okay. I don't. I, I don't know. Good. All I want is um I, I want I want a hot dog that is uh grilled and split down the middle, kind of like the it's bun. It's a mustard. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, to be controversial, if you're from Chicago, mustard's fine. Um, and I love a fully loaded dog, but like, if we just want to go to the, what have I eaten the most? It's a hot dog with ketchup. And I'm going is what I've eaten Is what I've eaten most in the world. Mustard all yeah. day. Mustard all day. Um, on my sandwich. Yeah. Which is a hot dog. <laughs> Thomas McGrew, all I got out of that conversation is Jake claiming hot dogs are protein. <laughs> it is it is a it meat. Is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, protein yeah. in it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But the protein levels of the of the hot dog meat Does it uh, have could protein be, in it. Could be questionable. Uh yeah, yeah. No, no, yes. for sure. For that's sure. Protein. I it, it would be it would be a protein. I I, yeah. I agree. It has a protein in it. Uh one gram. One gram. Uh, no, probably a little more. Probably a little more to be fair. Uh, so spring game going on this weekend, coming up to open hour two. I think I want to go uh, more in depth on kind of position groups who are maybe looking for who, who could show out. Uh, it's going to be a big recruiting weekend as well. Um, you got Bryce Underwood coming to town, the number two wide receiver, Kalik Lockett coming in town. And maybe that might end up being a big deal because according to the on three recruiting prediction machine, Decorey and Moore, the uh, number one receiver in the country, number one receiver in Texas from Duncanville, is uh, now being predicted to flip to Texas from LSU, which uh, is, is it, it is it is by no means a settled affair, um, and it remains kind of a coin flip more than anything. It's just that Texas is thought to have taken back a slight lead there. Uh, did you get protein numbers on the dog? Uh, five grams. Look at that. So protein. Wow. So after every workout, I should be eating a hot dog. Get 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 that. Get, that. get your turkey dog, bro. Feed, feed my muscles. They um, got those as well. Don't have to be beef um, or whatever they consider that. Uh, Alondra Ken Kent Mastinich asks, "Is a taco a sandwich?" And as our local Mexican representative, that's and a really Tex-Mex, good question. Uh, Tex Mex representative, I would like to know your opinion on the matter. That's a good question. I have to kind of ponder it a little bit, but if we're using the two is a the, the protein, logic the logic of protein, but like protein inside of a carb, like or is it like, bread? Think about it like a because burrito. Because a tortilla is not a bread. A bread. Yeah, yeah. It feels like a sandwich. Tortilla, tortilla, tortilla not feels bread. pretty bread like, dude. It's, it but does it's not, not bread though. It's not bread like at all. How is it not bread like at all? How is it bread like? 
Uh, I it mean, doesn't have like if airy it's a pockets. flour tortilla, it's made out of flour. Yeah, but if it doesn't uh, taste like bread at all. It's not bready at all. Am I? Wait, wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. So you're telling me about a hard tortilla. You're telling me, and, and I get what you're saying. Like the process of making a tortilla and and a loaf of bread are drastically different. Yeah. But am I really to believe that we're not all walking around here? putting tortillas in a very similar, if not the same category to bread? Absolutely from not. From a functional standpoint? Mm -mm. Wow, that feels crazy to me. Just feels like a bread substitute. Feels like Mexican bread. No, Mex no. I mean, nobody, Taylor, Jake, nothing here? Do I think a tortilla is bread? No. No, I don't either. No, no. Wow. Wow. Man, looks I, like think I, need a, I think tortilla is a- uh, It feels like a flatbread to me, like Ken says. I yeah, that's kind of how I feel. tacos are like its own thing. Um, like pita, do you think pita's a sandwich? It's literally pita bread. So yeah, pita, but do you yes. think pita is bread? And, yeah, and a tortilla's not? No. What kind of absurd lines are no. we that, drawing here, pita guys? Pita is way different from a tortilla. <sighs> you you have a better argument asking about like, is the Taco Bell Chalupa a oh, sandwich? I That's closer to chalupa. the pita. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. That's right true. Now. It is close to pita. What about a hamburger? But tortilla. It's kind of a sandwich. Not bread. Yeah, I would say a hamburger is a yeah, sandwich. And I'm a sandwich. Sure, yeah. yeah, of course, a hamburger is a sandwich. What are we talking about? Yeah. yeah. Um. I. Okay. I'm shocked. Okay. Never mind. I'm. I don't know. Uh, spring football coming up next. <laughs> Off the bench with Hester and T. Bob. Accutemp of Baton Rouge. AccutempBR.com. Uh, AccutempBR.com. For our AC, heat, and electrical needs, go see Accutemp and take control of your comfort zone today. I swear to you. When you work with them, you will never feel as confused as I do in this moment, being shouted down about my mental relation and tortillas and bread. Mm -hmm. uh, because when working with AccuTemp, uh, the process is incredibly clear uh, throughout. And they send you a ton of information about who's coming into your home. Uh, they say service to the highest degree, and that's not just lip service, okay? They walk that walk. Learn for yourself by scheduling online, AccuTempBR.com. Say a hot dog is a sandwich. It's on a hamburger bun. Just you know, hamburger bun, hot dog bun. What about him? Just saying, all of it's a sandwich. Yeah, look, I agree on the hot dog yeah. bun. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not yeah. fighting. We agree on Accutem and AccutemBR.com. Check them out online today. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a one million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. 
Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Good morning. It's 8 a.m. on Tuesday, April 9th. Today in Baton Rouge, you can expect partly cloudy skies with a high of 84. In hour two of today's show, we'll talk some LSU spring football along with a little bit of recruiting news. And we'll continue our talk of LSU baseball. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTV underscore ESPN. And watch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel. Hour number two of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge studios, starts now. Where do we go? All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, T, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Um, yeah, Daniel's right. Uh, maybe we do need to make an impromptu call to Chef Michael Johnson uh, to settle this because... The debate is raging here in studio off air as to whether or not um, PETA, or excuse me, uh, uh, Freudian slip, uh, as to whether or not tortillas are bread. I just love the sentence that Alondra uttered, which is, uh, what was it? It was the exact same one that you uttered, yeah, it too. It was. But yeah, but I'm saying they're the same thing in my head. You said, uh, you said, except for the ingredients. Yeah. Uh, tortillas and bread are in no way alike, which is crazy because you're saying except for the very things that they are made yeah. out of, they are no way alike. They're not. Wow. Wow. Um, I and look, but you know what? Maybe I just maybe I maybe I uh, I'm and a little, honestly, like, uh, yeah, no, I don't think that they're bread at all. Maybe I allow a little more in my and bread I don't category. Think they taste like bread. I think crackers are bread. Um, you make a good point about the lunchables. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, when you when you have you, a, no, when you no, that was Somebody. me. When you have a, I love lunchables. I love when you get those big trays from the grocery store that aren't called lunchables, but basically are grown up. You know, yeah, lunchables. like the grown up lunchables, and they're at a party. I'll make seventeen little sandwiches. They're always called like something harvest, and they got like the fancy cheeses. Yeah, in. yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, also, you know, Alondra, there's there's a lot of bread out there. Right. Like, like, again, like if we think pita is bread and there's flat bread, I would say those are rather tortilla like. No. Um, so, yeah, maybe it's not a sourdough or it's not like a like a like a like a like a buttery white loaf. But I, I still feel there's 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 something um, something there. <laughs> um, Give us this day our daily tortillas. Exactly. I believe <laughs> now when the Catholic Church uh, coming over from Spain <laughs> started to settle California and Mexico. Well done, Daniel. Uh, I believe that was what they changed the the prayer to at that time. Um, oh, all the way. All the way. Or sorry, by the way. Uh, some people asked me about snaps. They dropped volume, not uh, renewing it. We are keeping it going. Okay, so yes, uh, volume is not renewing snaps, but me and Aaron Murray will continue to do so. We'll do independently for the foreseeable future, maybe forever. We'll see. Uh, but we're also shopping around to other companies, so we'll see. Um, T. Bob puts tomatoes in his gumbo. Pat, that's absurd. I'm uh, that's absurd to say that is untrue. That is untrue, completely and wholly. I do not put tomatoes in my gumbo, um, and I, I don't. I don't. I don't like. If, if somebody makes it this way, I'm sure they can make it very well. Um, but I also, you know, don't put tomatoes in jambalaya either. So uh, get out of here. With that, I, I like tomatoes in many things, but neither of those dishes. 
Mm. Maybe we're getting too deep now because we're getting into pizzas, sandwiches, calzones. Calzone kind of feels like it is. Um, my dad says he doesn't think tortillas are bread. W- waiting on my mom. I mean, to be fair, um, given y'all's Tex-Mex and Mexican origins, like I would, they were both even though I don't know which Mexico. side of your family. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Okay, so I would say that if my this was a court. My mom doesn't speak English. Okay, so I would say if this was a court case, then that they would be considered expert witnesses. Probably. And their opinion should matter maybe a bit more than ours, though um, maybe need to put it up uh, to Democratic vote. Since this is America, and see where the people. Well, fall. we gotta we gotta find a bread expert now, right? <laughs> yeah, a bread yeah. expert. Because uh, they they obviously know the tortilla. Now we gotta get a bread expert. If they both agree, yeah, I think I think we're good. That's Somebody true. gave me a loaf of bread the other day. They gave my wife a loaf of bread, and That's nice. it was incredible. It was it, it almost was like a like a fatter, better Jimmy John's loaf, and I ate the whole we ate the whole loaf in a day. I couldn't stop. Just kept cutting it up and putting butter on it. Mm, munch that thing up. Oof, a little bread, butter, salt, mm, mm, olive oil. Mm, 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 mm. So tasty, so tasty. Um, I put a little fire roasted sauce in my jambalaya, Dan says. All right, that sounds great, dude. That sounds great. Um, St. Bruno Bread Company. Yeah, I see them at uh, Iverson's. They're pretty good. Uh, oh, that's true. Uh, my wife's actually listening to the show. What's up, babe? Uh, she says she'd call her father-in-law, who's gotten very into making bread recently and he's great and in fact you made some sourdough her father-in-law his... your father oh my father-in-law oh. <laughs> I was oh. like, no dad? i was no, like my Bobby's dad, into bread no, he's not into bread he's never been terribly culinary mm-hmm. though but he's got a restaurant uh yeah exactly right uh though he's so meticulous that he would take the most simple things and try to dress them up as if he was doing something uh like he would heat up like a hungry jack or what were the old hungry man meals the Salisbury steak, and it would take that man like 10 minutes. He'd be like plating it, and he'd like cut up an, a, a banana on the side and, and, and feel like he was serving a five. The one thing that man does love, bonsai trees. <laughs> Absolutely adores him. He's had two bonsais for damn probably over a decade now, and they're huge, and they're massive, and he takes care of them every single day. He's just always been. He, just, he loves uh, trees. And, and kind of vegetation in general, flora and fauna. But, uh, man, those bonsais. Sometimes I wonder if he likes them more than the kids. But, you know. Bonsais are a commitment, dude. You know, what are you going to... Oh, I you am can't like leave town. full-on plant mom. Are you? Yeah. Do you have a bonsai? I don't have a bonsai, okay. but I just propagated a stem and a What leaf. does that mean? So it's just a stem that doesn't have anything on it, and you put it in some dirt to propagate it, and it's supposed to, like, sprout okay. and stuff. So I just did one a couple weeks ago, and it's sprouting new, oh, new leaves, and it makes me so happy. And I have some in my office that I just repotted. I know. What? Uh, it gives me so what much. What kind joy. of plant? Um, the one that is in that is at my house is a tea plant, and then okay. I have some spider aurelias downstairs and a dumb oh. cane. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm saying oh, and okay, like I have. Any I know, point of reference to, for what those are. Yeah, I have yeah, no yeah. idea what those are, but I am happy for you. And they say very cool names. Spider Aurelias and a dumb plant? Yeah, dumb cane. Dumb cane? Yeah. Is that named after Taylor? Yeah, it is. I um, knew. I was waiting. I was like, how is it taking him this long? Uh, okay, propagating is taking a stem from an existing plant and growing another plant from it. Yes. Okay, that's cool. Right on, man. Um, is cornbread bread? Absolutely. It's right there in the name, dude. What are we talking about? Let's not go too far with this. It's literally called bread. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I've never had a green thumb, unfortunately. Probably every couple of years, me and my wife are like, we're going to start a garden. And then we do, and then we fall off. I can and give y'all a dies. stem. Nope. I can give y'all a stem. Y'all nope. can probably. At a certain point, I just have stopped ever tricking myself into thinking that I'm going, that going to, to do, uh, it. do it. Yeah. 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 Okay. She still hasn't got there. She still does it and tries. And, and she can have a stem. Cue the text to. of her being like, "We ate that broccoli a couple of weeks ago, or something." Like we, we have gotten some stuff at times from there. It's just not. Well, you should get some, some, some nice house plants. Um, yeah, house plants are really easy to take care of. Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, and I do love the feelings that house plants give to the interior. But I've never had house plants. I mean, my house growing up, I did obviously. My old man's obsessed. But I've never had any house plants. Probably a lot classier if I had house plants. The uh, when we bought our house a year and a half ago, the the couple we bought it from left us like a little bitty house plant in a pot. Right. The thing lasted like a year and a half. 
We uh, just threw it away like two months ago. Just one, just one random house plant. No, no greater design or aesthetics. Just one random house. No, nah, I mean it was in like a fancy pot and everything, and it was. They left us like a welcome card in the in the pot and everything. It was nice. Um, oh, that is nice. Yeah, uh, they were nice people. So, yep, here's a text. This is from my wife. Uh, we have strawberries, and when they are blooming, or, or no, when they are booming, you don't get any. You haven't been in that garden for one minute. <laughs> Fair. I have not. You don't get any. Um, I don't even you like may strawberries. Put in that's that pretty work. cool. You ain't on that grind. Right. That's fine. That's cool. Now I, I want to grow some strawberries. Um, I just want BLTs. I could eat one BLT a day for my entire life. Wait. I'd be so happy. <laughs> How do we go from strawberries, from strawberries to BLTs? Because I'm thinking of tomatoes, other things that you can grow in the garden. And like, uh, what if you had lettuce. some fresh tomatoes ready to go? Ooh, with some good butter lettuce. And then you had a pig running big around. Cut, big, yeah. Slaughter. Yeah, just slaughter that pig, dude. Little baby, little your suckling pig. Yeah. Teach him the ways of the land. Yeah, I did try to explain to my daughter Would yesterday. Would you teach him because he'd be slaughtered? Uh, what? I don't think you can teach him because... No, no, teach my kids the ways of the land. Oh, okay. like I thought you were talking about the pig. I'm like, I don't know. I did really have a conversation with my daughter yesterday about it because she was like, um, I don't, she was like, I, I can't remember how, but we were talking about eating meat. And then she was like, but I love animals. I'm a friend to all animals. I was like, yeah, it's cool though. But look, God put animals on here to feed us as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. I was like, we don't eat dogs and cats though. Some people do, we don't. But um, I don't know. She seemed a little disconcerted. Every animal has its purpose. It was put yeah. here for, for a purpose. Some are to be pets, some are to be food. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, although so they all can ecosystem. be food if you need them to be um, in a pinch, I suppose. Uh, but so can humans. So in I guess pinch. that's a, yeah, anybody, a pinch. Yeah, anybody can be. <laughs> so you got enough 3018 in you. You can say pinch. Tough one to. I do. I mean, literally half my blood. Half my blood is BLT a sandwich. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Very obviously. <laughs> um, I also did used to have a weird soft spot for gas station sandwiches. Mm hmm. In college, like the one triangles. in particular, yep. just like nope, not one in particular, on just a you, generic like. ham and cheese, turkey and cheese, whatever. I got into the chicken salad ones yeah. for a little bit, which yeah. feels a little more sketchy. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, like back it's, like, on it's like gas station sushi. Uh, gas that's station a, chicken that's a definite salad. No. I've never done that. I do love yeah. grocery store sushi though. I do Massive. too. Yeah, grocery store Unfortunately, okay. I hate to admit yeah. it, I do as well. Like the ham and cheese though, in the triangles in the gas station. That gets stuck to the roof of your mouth. But in the like, best way, though. Yeah, because the, the, the bread's best way. cold and a little bit yeah. soggy, and it's just like, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Good mushy bread. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, gas station chicken salad or egg salad sandwich is a massive gamble. I agree. I agree. Uh, all right. Let's go to break. When we get back, a little OTB Melvin coming up next. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. You feel that, Murphy, Sam, and Jody? Huh? How do you like that generic life conversation? You like apples? How you like them apples? How you like GoTommies.com? Tommies, windows, doors, and siding. When you work with Tommy, you're going to see the difference clearly, Okay. If you need a uh, hardy plank or vinyl siding, if you need wood or vinyl windows, if you need any type of door, you need to go to GEAUXTommies.com today and take advantage of a company that is uh, has integrity, is dependable, is professional, is efficient, and has won the Angie Service Award seven years in a row. Uh, testimonial here. These don't move. Uh, Tommy came out the same day to give me an estimate, and his guys were out the following day to install my doors. They did a great job at a very reasonable price. Highly, highly recommended. And you're going to see a ton of these on the website. They truly are the best. That's why they win awards every single year. GoTimes.com, 225-250-8808. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. He's here. Anyone want a Coors Light? Oh shoot, I forgot to play the song. 
I got a guy who can fix this. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Oh, by the way, we do shutters too. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Oh, welcome back, OTB. All right, we got Coach Mulkey coming up, so let's dive in to some OTB mailbag. Special delivery! I have this special delivery for Off the Bench. And look, it is marked most urgent. We'll be writing to you. The internet. What the f*** is the internet? Do y'all two even know what the sounds at the end of that come from? Dial-up internet. Okay, look at you. Look at you. Have Any you ever had to wait on dial-up internet? How long I had no, to wait? No, did you ever did have, you have to? Like in your life? I, I, you I, oh, no, I never had to wait on okay. okay. no. Uh, no, I don't know about high speed, but... I'll yeah, wait. but not dial-up. No. Yeah, yeah. Hashtag OG Mailbag, what's your ultimate sandwich? Uh, a club sandwich. Quite simply. Room service club sandwich. Yeah, club sandwiches are just the best. They've a got room service on. club sandwich, fries, and Oof. a Diet Coke. Oof. Yeah, that a is club good. sandwich. The, that is so yeah. good. Dude. Mine's oh from a God. specific place. We've mentioned it multiple times, but club sandwich. Yeah. From where? Uh, Newly's, Newly's is your spot, out in right? Yep. Um, at, okay, I, I do want to give a shout out. I do want to give a yeah. shout out to Lee's. Uh, if you're ever driving up north and you can pass through Lee's, yeah, you go get that chopped ham. Damn. Damn. It's a good sandwich. Get yourself a pie while you're there, too. Have y'all uh, been back uh, since you've gone that one time? No, you... we, oh, we gone, we've gone plenty. Okay. I try to leave early enough in the day to get there for lunch every time as a nice little How rest spot. How far is it off the interstate? Uh, I don't know. It only adds like five, yeah, ten minutes to my trip. Right, yeah. Um, but uh, but I get sad whenever we leave too late and can't get, get there in time. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's about to be lake season, which means a lot of Lee's lies in my future. Oh, Lake Bob. Uh, Get ready. Y'all haven't experienced Lake Bob yet. Boy, Jacques Cormery. Hashtag go to me. Back. Is cake a bread? I mean, isn't it bread? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I feel like you are answering that so flippantly, considering how strong your stance was earlier, but whatever. Um, yes, I would say so. Chris Little. Hashtag go to me. Back. Gas, charcoal, or pellet grill? Charcoal. Um, charcoal if you want the smoky taste for sure. Uh, gas because it's easier. Gas is the easiest. I have gas. I use pellets. They got medicine for that. 
Uh, pellets really easy if you have one of those automatic feeders. I mean, it's just like firing up a gas grill or anything else. Um, I use a pellet grill, but I don't really have too too much of a dog in this fight. I don't like that my wife needs to listen to the show anymore. She needs to stop, turn, turn it, it off. I love it. Now she's texting me. I love it. it, it, it true corn tortilla is not bread. If it's no, made of corn, exactly. get out of here. Shout woman. out, Caitlin. You used to say here, stuff woman. with your chest out because Caitlin didn't listen. I love the fact that now, whatever. I, I, you know, I'm a degenerate. And I'll still make sex jokes. I don't care if she's listening or not. Uh, hashtag OG <laughs> She's mailbag. about to text him. Like, <laughs> what should I have for lunch? Club sandwich. <laughs> does sound pretty damn good. That either does sound either good. a hot dog or a sandwich. Uh, yeah, true. Hot dog. Or is, a taco. Is crawfish a lunch food? I have a tentative well, don't crawfish you usually lunch eat it like during tomorrow. the day? Yes, but I mean, generally I, it's on the like weekend, weekend when I'm going to shut oh, it down yeah, yeah, for the no. rest of the if day. If you're going for a work lunch, no, your yeah, hands are going like to smell that, like that all day. It's kind of no. crazy, no, right? No, that's an awful work lunch. Um, yeah. Hashtag OG oh, Mailbag. Alondra, what's your favorite houseplant? Uh, I think the dumb cane is super cute, but my spider Aurelia is growing really, really, really well. Wow. They say parents don't have favorites. I know. Sad. Who are you, oh. Deion Sanders? Hashtag OG oh, Mailbag. Uh, I mean, come on, like, here's, you know, the rankings are yeah, I mean, not always the same, up, dude, but, Just straight up. You know. Favorite type of taco. I think we did this We've a little while ago. this, yeah. The next one. Yeah, but you got to remember, yeah, nobody listens one. to everything. <laughs> That's a great answer, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, a, 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 fr- a, a flash fried, like, fish taco is, oh, just unbelievable. I mean, we did answer this because I, I mentioned Anthony's in San Diego. The fish tacos there, incredible. No chat. I do not have to be careful. I'm a man. I can no. say whatever I want. Let Ooh. me tell you, we all know the answer to that. Um, yes, he does. Hashtag O2 Mailbag. Is ride or die too hard of a personalized plate for someone driving a Nissan Altima? <laughs> uh, yes. Um, yes. I don't know. I mean, you, you never know somebody's story. Hell no, dude. I drove a Nissan Altima for years. Did Ain't your no license problem. plate say ride or die? To be fair, it did not. Okay. Well, then that's yeah. different. Uh, custom license plates are definitely... In terms of, so we're taught not to judge a money. book by its cover. There is nothing that will make me judge you quicker than a custom license plate. Like any custom license plate will get you a base amount of judgment that will only grow based on what the license what plate says. What is it says. about the custom license plate that? It's just like, like why do you need that? It's a personality yeah, no, type. It's, it's you know you you're going you, you're going the extra mile. To get that message out there, it's it's it's. I mean, I guess it's just like an evolved form of bumper stickers, or or maybe a less obtrusive. Are you gonna hate on bumper stickers, stickers now? Uh, you're telling me you don't judge. Uh, just so I don't, car full of bumps. No, nah. I don't judge Lies. personalized license plate. I do judge cars full of bumper stickers. I judge both. Depending on the license plate, like I saw one the other really? day. Um, and if they're listening, shout out to him. It just said Bennett. Like the last name, yeah, and I got really uncle, jealous because I was like, my "That's uncle cool." Has Hester. How'd you He's get that? Forever. Like, I think that's cool. So, it depends on the person. I saw one plate. the other day that I'm pretty sure was missing a letter because it said "gateness," but I think they meant greatness, and it didn't have an R. Did it I have an eight? In it, it had G eight N S S. Yeah, yeah. There, you know, because it, it, you know, you, you, you have pick. limited letters. You have limited letters. Seven, right? Seven? Yeah. So don't. Seven. So just don't right. put that on there. <laughs> my my older brother has. Bumper stickers from so he's a soccer coach and any time any of his you know players go to college they get him a bumper sticker of the college that they went to and he puts it on his car. Um, look, a lot of I schools. I I have dabbled in bumpers before. I used to have a rock star energy drink bumper sticker in high you school. You definitely had the Apple logo. I had a Crescent City Comics bumper sticker, much to my wife's chagrin, and uh. Uh, after college, living in New Orleans, I don't currently have a bumper sticker, um, but I'm, I'm just saying that I accepted that I'm going to be judged when putting those things in my car. Yeah. I thought y'all had that family bumper sticker on the back of the minivan. Uh, no. no. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Star Wars version. I had... It's sad, though, because then I had to scrape my cat off, and that would bum me out. Uh, there was a, I wore 13 in high school, and there was a NASCAR driver that had 13 i don't even remember who it was but he had you know obviously nascar has stickers and i had a 13 like decal on the back of my truck look again i like 
I'm not saying don't use bumper stickers, but just know that everybody is going to judge you for your bumper stickers, which is kind of what you're looking for, right? Yeah, right. Why else are you putting them on there? Yeah, you don't want a bumper sticker that nobody's going to read. Yeah, or or, or react to. Um, How am I supposed to know that you're an atheist if you don't have the Jesus fish with legs? Right. Okay, I don't know. Wait, that's a that I've never seen. Never, never seen, seen that. Jesus never oh, seen man, that one. It's all over the place. Or maybe uh, I just haven't. And maybe it's not fair to say atheist. Maybe you're just like I believe in evolution, which you know I I am a theist and I do. So whatever. I don't know. Uh, hashtag OGB mailbag. If you land in feudal Japan in 1640 as a Portuguese spy dressed as a merchant, do you tell Tokugawa Yasu that he has no grit? Absolutely. Yeah. I don't even know who that is. I don't but know sure. anything you just said, but you said grit. I'd say be careful. Be careful selling Tokugawa that. Seems like a one ray trip to Sapuku. If you're is that, is that show that you're watching? I think it's from. I think it's from. Yeah, I think it's from um, Shogun, which I'm. A, I'm a few apps behind. I lost a little bit of momentum with Shogun. I'm gonna go back and see. Even though I just had this one. I don't. I think. I think Spanger. Warriors. I think Warriors. Your next show. A pilot. He's got this. Uh, he's, he's, oh, I, now I he needs to watch the it. gentleman. Like. He's not yeah, watch probably. That. Probably. It's should eight watch episodes. It's eight episodes. You can get it. I got. So I got good. one left. I still haven't finished it. I finished it. I got one left. I finished yeah, it. I'm good. I Did had to. It? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah when, when, like, I, when Katie and I start a show, typically if it's a, a binge, like we're going to binge. Mm. Like, you're going to knock it out pretty quick. Now, I do love a once a week show. You know that. I love yeah, the yeah. anticipation it's of that. It's the best that. time. It's the best way to do it nowadays. I think it is. Uh, hashtag OT Mailbag. Favorite Kevin Smith movie. It will always be. Jay and Tom Bob Strikes Back. Yeah, me too. There's a lot of good ones, but that the one opening is, scene alone, I'm like, yep, you got me. It's core to my I can't, personality. I can't repeat any of it, but just YouTube it. I'm, I'm, I'm the noish, reason noish, noish. why I curse so much. I'm pretty sure is because I saw that movie at the exact right time to form my personality. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't think I've seen any of these. Yeah, I don't know who Kevin Smith is. Hmm. Don't know who that is. I feel old. Take it back. He used to play running back at UCF a long time ago. Uh, so y'all never heard of Clerks, like Small Rats, Chasing Amy. Wait, I think I've seen Daredevil. Uh, you don't, don't pick out Daredevil. You've not seen the, Mall Rats. Not the one to highlight. You've seen Jay and No, Tyler no, Mall. definitely oh, haven't seen Mall wait, Rats. See, Mall Rats is not that. I've seen Tusk. Mall Rats. Okay, yeah, Tusk is I've a more recent. I've not seen Tusk. That's did he do Jersey one. Girl as well? He did do Jersey Girl. That's actually not bad. Really? Jersey Girl went bad. You might be one of the first human beings to ever utter that Jersey Girl was not that You're bad. You're thinking of Geely. Uh, no, no, no. Geely also not Jersey good. Girl with Liv Tyler? I saw, Jersey girl, I saw Jersey girl yeah, in high school Affleck and was like, bad. this is not good. I did not have a good time. It's I don't remember awful. anything about the movie. I actually don't I don't hate it. Never heard of any of these. Um, That's weird. Mm. That's weird for me. I get hashtag it. That's weird. OTB mailbag. What's worse, Sapuku or Bukaki? Uh, <laughs> hashtag OTB mailbag. Is that a better feeling than walking on the field to play with the stands full? No, I mean, full stadium in any sport is the most gladiatorial, greatest feeling that you can achieve, probably outside of like having a kid. I would say that. For me, the sport that I picked, the best part about it was the Dog violent, was great. the Sorry. violent nature of it, and being able to talk trash and knowing, even if you got got, that you had like 17, 18 more chances to get the person that got you violently, because it was legal. Yeah, I agree. Best part of the game. Um, pan is Spanish for bread, so it would be pan. So pan. So that Guillermo del Toro movie is actually bread's labyrinth. <laughs> Oh, how about that? So, like, Panera bread. Like, how does that work? Ah, uh, Panera. What does Panera mean? I don't know. Is that Spanish? I don't know. I feel like it. You, what, what y'all, know. like, we've got to stop talking about food. It's only 828. We still have to be here an hour and a half Hey, just longer. be happy it ain't munchies today. You know what we need to do? Sure. We need to go to break so we can call Coach Kim Mulkey next here on OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T Bob. Get Gordon and get it done today. 225 888 8888. That's right. You need somebody who's going to fight for you and get you what you deserve. You want to go to getgordon.com and check it out right now. Gordon Gibbs is proud to announce the Gordon Grads giveaway. You can enter for a chance to win a laptop for college or grade school. If that sounds interesting to you, 
Um, they're giving away 12 laptops to high school graduating seniors across state. Go to gordonsgrads.com for details on how to enter to win. Go to the website as well, getgordon.com, for all the information of what they can do for you in the courtroom. As we always tell you, free consultation can get set up right there on the site. You can have a conversation on the site. You can see past client results on the site. You can see cases they handle right there on the website. So it's set up for success, for your success. Also, always on all major social media for things like T-Bob is talking about, at Gid Gordon is always going to be that handle. And in Louisiana, your area code followed by 888-8888. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the jimsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the jimsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank any. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Yo, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back. OTB, and every single Tuesday during basketball season, we are so blessed to be joined by one of the best coaches in all of sports, full stop, and that is Coach Kim Mulkey, fresh off another successful season, an elite eight finish for her Tigers, and uh, most recently on Saturday being parodied on SNL. Coach, what's going on? Did you have any idea that the SNL bit was coming? <laughs> Good morning, guys. Absolutely not. I was actually in the bed with my grandson sleeping, and my son, Kramer, just blew my phone up and he's like, you're not going to believe what I'm watching. And I thought, honestly, he was being funny. Kramer has a crazy sense of humor. And, uh, 
he later sent that to me in the middle of the night so I could see it. And, uh, yeah, it was funny, I guess, you know, but I had to ask what uh, some of that resting QAnon face meant. I'm not into politics, so I had to ask <laughs> oh, no, a few people. Oh, no. Yeah, look, look, it's not, it's not about the, to me at that point, it's not about the jokes. It's more about the fact that you just end up on SNL. I mean, that is a bucket list sort of item. And I, I thought it was kind of interesting, Coach, like, the entire bit is a testament to what we talk about on this show a lot and what you've helped create, which is that the women's tournament had so much more interest than the men's. Well, I would agree with that. I think uh, the ratings pretty much uh, tell you that. And uh, it's it's been just so fun and interesting to watch the ratings and be a part of that with, our, with my team, our team. And, uh, you know, that'll go down in history through the years that, you know, what are some of the most watched games in the history of women's basketball? And to, to think that I and LSU have been a big part of that. Is this the most growth that you've ever seen in the game? Because, Coach, I mean, you, you started this game for a long time as a player, as a coach, and you've been through, you know, different periods of the game, and there's been some huge growth in the past. Like, But is this just crazy seeing some of these numbers and, you know, peaking at 24 million people watching a game? Well, it has, and people send me things because I guess when you've been around the game as long as I have, you tend to forget things. And the other day, someone said, look at the top 10 rated games, Coach, and you were a part, either as a coach or a player, of the top five. You were in four of the top five of these rated games. And I thought, hmm, wow, I'm really getting old. (laughs) <laughs> um, but it also to answer your question about the current ratings it really is crazy to think that from last year's national championship to this year's national championship it it's unbelievable and I still ask myself why why now what has made it this way it's more than just television coverage i think it's just the personalities the talent the coaches i think it's just a little bit of everything that's grabbed people's attention i i think it's definitely like kind of a cultural perfect storm of good in a lot of ways coach but i mean for whatever negatives come along with this i also don't think you can ignore the role that like social media or nil play in this space right because all of a sudden you turn on the tv and you see angel reese on all these commercials you see you see whoever your favorite player is on all these commercials and speaking. I mean, Angel Reese announces she's going to the WNBA in a Vogue photo shoot, uh, which speaking of Angel coach, uh, two years here in Baton Rouge, dominant throughout national champion, elite eight. Uh, when you reflect on your time together and, and what she meant to you and you meant to her coming in together, what are kind of your, your feelings on um, these last couple of years with Angel? What she did in a short period of time is off the charts. It's phenomenal. Um, Angel Reese came here and uh, wanted a fresh start and to win a national championship and make it to an Elite Eight. That's, I mean, coaches and players can be around this game a long time and never do that. Yeah. And uh, for her to do that in two short years, uh, graduate in May and then heads off to the WNBA. Um, she she fulfilled what she said she would do when she came, and that was give us two years. We all hoped that she would take that COVID year and come back, but <laughs> you can't you can't be selfish in that regard. You have to let her go chase her dreams. Coach, now with the schedule and the way that it is, I mean, the transfer portal opened up while we were still talking to you because you were still playing games. It was during the tournament and trying to get, you know, your roster set for next year. I mean, there's no no rest for the weary in getting next year already started and you had the high school recruits and you got the portal open. Like, is that still like right now an everyday process of trying to figure out what this team's going to look like next year, even though you just finished up the season a couple of days ago? Your roster's never finalized anymore with the transfer portal. Guys, people are getting in the portal every day. All conference players, starters, 
Um, and it's not because there's been a change in coaching staff all the time. It's it's just the, where we are in the game now. And we'll have some get in the portal. You know, um, Haley Van Lith is in the portal. Mm-hmm. She gave me what she said, and that was one year, and I'm so appreciative. Uh, Haley wants to go and, and get another start and try to get her stock higher for the draft uh, next year. You've got uh, Angelica in the portal. You know, a lot of these kids that get in the portal, they just want to go play. But some of them, it has nothing to do with playing time. It's the, it's just the world we live in, and your roster is never finalized really until next year when you can't transfer anymore. It's cut off. Uh, so we'll be in the portal. We'll lose kids in the portal. It's just what we do now. Yeah, it's uh, you know, and and it's one of those situations where it giveth and it taketh away, right? So uh, instead of bemoaning, you just kind of kind of stay on top of it. Um, Coach, when you reflect on this year defending a national championship, and we've seen so many times how hard that can be, whether it's Nick Saban and that 03 to 04 team, or obviously LSU football after 2019, LSU baseball is kind of going through it right now. Um, what's your kind of view on how this year went for uh, for you and your team defending that natty? Well, I was so happy for Danny Hurley. Um, I really like that guy. I love his wife. Got to know them last year. After the championship, we attended some event together in New York City. It's just hard to do. Um, it, it's, it's just not something that um, – because you have everybody coming back or you have all your starters returning and all this that you just go, that's an automatic. They should do it. So many things take place from dismissal of players to injured players, uh, things that are, you know, you don't expect. When I look back on this year and we had a starter and Samaya Smith go down, we had uh, a lot of disruptions with uh, players and to make it, to an Elite Eight, lose by seven to Iowa team that has a generational player, the same generational player we beat last year for the championship. It's it's really remarkable, and I'm very proud that um, we were able to get to that Elite Eight uh, with new players. We only had two in that starting lineup from the previous year. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's only one team is ever happy this time of year, guys. And, and <laughs> it's, it's, when you just so sum true. it up that way, it's, is it is it any more rewarding to play for that championship and lose or losing an Elite Eight or losing the semifinals of the Final Four? Losing is terrible if you're a competitor. But you have to keep perspective that only one team is happy. Yeah. Yeah, well, and it, and again, it's a testament to the process, right? Complete new team, and you find yourself in those final eight once again. Um, Coach, so what's going on with this banquet and the uh, and the PMAC on Thursday? Yeah, we have our end of season banquet now. Usually, it well, not usually. The end of season banquet is strictly for the seniors. Well, it's the only two we have not not going to be able to be there because Angel has obligations with the draft coming up Monday, and Haley is probably. I don't know this, but I doubt she'll be there because she's probably taking visits and she's in the portal. But it will be about those two young ladies. It's always about the seniors and acknowledging them. And it'll be packed. Um, it's a very well-attended event. And uh, I encourage anybody that, want it, that wants to come to get a ticket and come. Um, you know, I've invited, like, Angelica Velez, who's in the portal. Yeah. Any of them that get in the portal, please come. This is about the season you just had, and we want to acknowledge it. Um, Coach, when when you look at who did end up winning the national championship, it's uh, a South Carolina team that, that you all know all too well um, gave them a couple of real fights uh, this year. And now, pretty wild what South Carolina's done over the last three years, 109-3. and three. Uh, so if how how when like as someone who is directly competing with that team again just traded a national championship there, uh, what are these steps that you identify in terms of of uh, of catching them? Well, let me say this: the last three national championships, 
remain or championship teams come from the SEC. Yep. And we need to really acknowledge that because it helps all of us in the SEC. Her teams the last few years, and you got to remember, I go back to playing Dawn when I was at Baylor in 2019 when we won our third championship there. I played Dawn Staley twice in the same year. Wow. I played her in December, the beginning of the year, at her place, and then we ended up playing each other in the playoffs. So I was very familiar then on what Dawn was building at South Carolina. And right now, she's just a the hot team, the hot program, and she's got it going on. And uh, to think that she won it this year after losing all five starters last year is a testament to the fact that she kept them there and they didn't jump in the portal. Yeah, And that's, that's hard to do because every kid, every parent wants, what have you done for me today? I don't want to be patient. I don't want to wait and let the process um, unfold and, and, that's that's the the hard part and and, you know she does have talent but that talent has to want to be a part of it has to want to stay and and learn the process until their turn until they get their turn to get on the floor and that's what's really impressive uh certainly undefeated there's never uh what what i see maybe i don't know how many teams have done that i was fortunate to go 40 and 0 on one of my two well on the 2012 team And I say all that because everything she's experiencing, it's not easy. It's it's very difficult. And uh, people sometimes forget getting there is extremely hard, but maintaining a relevant program is even harder. And, And they're just really getting it done right now. And coach, you mentioned SEC three straight titles, and then next year you're just you know adding a team in Texas and also Oklahoma, but Texas who was a one seed in this latest NCAA tournament. So the rich get richer, and it just gets even more difficult. Well, it's not just in women's basketball. Texas and OU joining the league next year uh, will bring uh, recognition in a part of the, I guess, state and country. You know, we're we don't. We think of A and M, but now you got to go into Austin. You think of, um, you know, Norman, Oklahoma. So the SEC is really, um, I guess, being selfish. I want to say they're just handpicking who they want in the league, and yep. uh, here we go, right? Yeah, uh, Coach. So I, I, I hate this the last time we're gonna get to talk, or at least you know on a weekly basis, because uh, everybody loves us so much every single week. And as often as we come to you for you know basketball questions we come to you for life advice general sports advice and I know one of your passions is LSU baseball and the team's going through it a little bit here you know rough schedule lost four series in a row might be the first time program history coming off the natty uh if you like what are some kind of uh, areas or techniques or processes that you would identify how would you treat it if your team was slumping like this and you had to uh, try to kind of rouse them out of it? Well, the first thing you do is you don't worry about the, the fans and the outside noise. They're not at practice every day. They're not in that dugout. They're not in that locker room to understand uh, what it's going to take um, to get some of those role players in a thought process that now you're not a role player. you got to produce. Um, baseball um, is – is think about this. If you go after the best players in baseball in high school, they're usually not coming to your school. They're yeah. usually going to sign out of high school. So that is so hard because you go into the recruiting process and say, we're not going after any of those young men because we're not going to get them. Or do you continue to go sign those young men with the understanding we're probably not going to get them? And if you look at Jay, he's going after the best, as yeah. he should. And he didn't get a lot of those. So it's kind of like the transfer portal. You think you got your roster set, and then, bam, you get hit with all that with the draft. I have no doubt that Jay, the hell of a coach, look what he did. Yeah. Just just understand sports and understand sometimes it just it, – it takes um, – it takes a little time for some players that maybe you thought would produce early that need a you know a few more at bats. Um, it, it's you know I, I don't get caught up in God. You got to be this every year, every year, every year. Sure, that's all coaches want that every year. But sometimes 
you um, you've got to just step back, take a deep breath, fix some things that need fixing. And um, I can't wait to get out there. I haven't been out there yet. So nice. I'm looking forward to, to getting out there. But um, just as I tell people, take a deep breath, guys. We're okay. Uh, yeah, I know. That's kind of where that's that's where everybody's trying to avoid the panic. Well, look, they're going to they're going to Tennessee this weekend, and then return to the box. Hopefully, you can get out there. Just don't get thrown out by the ump this time, Coach. If you throw the first I, I, one. <laughs> I, I bet you Saturday Night Live, if they would have seen that, they would have let me host the other night, right? <laughs> I thought your acting was fantastic. I really did. Uh, Coach Kim Mulkey, legend in her own right, of course. Um, cannot thank you enough for another season of just valuable wisdom and insight and giving us your time every single week. Thank you so much, Coach, and congrats on, a, uh, on another great year. It was a joy to, to visit with you guys. Now, y'all love on your family, your kids, because uh, that's what life's all about, your family. Take care now. Yes, ma'am. Nice Will coach. do. Coach Kim Mulkey. All right. So we were really long there, but that was on purpose. I'm fully cognizant. This is like taking a false start to back up the punt. Um, we are going to go to break. We'll come back for like a minute, and then we're going to open up with Nick Underhill to start hour three. More to be coming up. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Community Steel Company, communitysteelco.com. You need steel. You want community steel. They're right there in Gonzales, Louisiana. I tell you about it every day. Okay, and whether it's metal roofing, sheet metal, purlin, tubing, trim, any accessories, any steel accessories, everything manufactured right there on site. Massive facilities. You can go check them out for yourselves. You can check out the product for yourself. Um, you can get to know the human live and local sales team and because they get it straight from the wholesaler and make it themselves the price point is better than these national companies it's why they're really changing and disrupting the steel game go check them out today at community steel company communitysteelco.com and when you go to the website we always tell you they've been open for two hours now so if you want to go see them in gonzalez it's right there at the top right corner of that website click on community steel shows you exactly where they're located, but also if you're not in the area and you want to get information, you can always pick up the phone, give them a call at 225-647-2020. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. And looking forward to 50 more. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. 
Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What's happening, y'all? Wait, so Jake, you haven't, here is, you haven't seen the SNL uh, coach Mulkey bit. Here is the impression. Basketball post game. Ernie Johnson alongside Iowa Connecticut. Boys, just deal my pickle. <laughs> oh, Kim, you look great. I love that outfit. Well, thank you, Charles. I got this custom made. I just told him, make me look like the Riddler went to Talbot's. <laughs> <laughs> now, Coach, you're known for being tough on your players. Some say too tough. Oh, please. People think I'm just mean because I got rest in QAnon face. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it... Off the bench with Hester and T Bob. Built.com is a website for any of your outdoor constructions, be it a um, an outdoor kitchen, bulkhead, pergola, fence, whatever the case may be. It's all there for you. Again, though, uh, pool season right around the corner. Those spec pools are pretty incredible. You have a bunch of different templates you can choose from. Choose a bunch of detail work around the edges, and you make it your own. And in two weeks, you have a pool. Again, guys, go look at the pictures and galleries on PECbuilt.com. You're going to be blown away. You'll also be blown away by how quick the process is. T-Bob's not lying. That is not lip service. I mean, they are in, they are out, and you have a pool. You are swimming this summer. You're not looking at construction. You're not waiting. No, you're enjoying that pool this summer. Yes, I know it's April, and we are telling you two weeks. Give them a call. Find them online, pecbuilt.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Elevate brand visibility, ignite customer engagement with the power of radio and digital advertising combined. Guarantee Digital Media brings the two together as a trusted media partner in Louisiana for nearly a century. Claim your free digital audit at GuaranteeMedia.com. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $22,500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $22,500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So 
retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana and their locals. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Good morning. It's 9 a.m. on Tuesday, April 9th. Today in Baton Rouge, you can expect cloudy skies with a high of 84. If you missed hours one or two of the show, you can catch them in the on-demand section at 1045ESPN.com. In hour three, we'll be joined by Nick Underhill of New Orleans.Football at 9 a.m. And we'll talk some LSU spring football. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTB underscore ESPN. And watch us on YouTube at the 1045 ESPN channel. Hour number three of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes Benz of Edridge Studios, starts now. Let we go! All Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T Bob Abear. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the, the Bench, bench with, with Hester and T Bob. Hey, they said I gotta come off the bench. All Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome back, OTB. And right now, it's hour number three, which means we kick things off every single Tuesday with our guy Nick Underhill from New Orleans.Football. Uh, go sign up for New Orleans.Football today. It is a fantastic, y'all. Uh, the best resource for all your Saints takes. Nick and Mike do a great job over there as well as the entire team. Nick, what's happening, bro? What's going on? Doing well, man. How are you guys doing? Doing very well. Uh, I'm just enjoying this random spring Tuesday. Uh, I don't really, I got to be honest though. Um, as I said, you do the best job of covering the Saints 24 7 in depth, leaving no stone unturned. Uh, I myself am running into a little bit of creative, uh, I, you could almost, I guess you could almost call it like writer's block with the Saints, all right. right? I feel like I've had all the conversations, like we've had the conversation. Like what is kind of tickling your fancy right now? What 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 is, what is at the fore of your mind when you think about what interests you with the Saints at this moment? Do you need me to do like a 15-minute monologue? Because like I, I can't, you guys have been, you know, I, like I, I owe you something here, so I can, I can do it if you need me to. I mean, look, no, and, well, and, that, and that's the thing, right? I mean, you go you, you go to the website right now, and there's great pods up and draft previews and all these sorts of things. And like, I, I've, I've, you know, we, we've talked about Kubiak ton, but like even today, we put in some article that's awful from just some random fan-sided site that's like the Cowboys – might want to look into trading Dak Prescott for Derek Carr. And I'm like, do we go there just for fun or something? So, like, it, w w what is interesting you so much right now about the Saints? I mean, for me, it's just kind of like like trying to, to uncover, like, the actual rankings of players at different positions. And you kind of start hearing more of the, the stuff about, like, the concerns that people have about players as you get closer to the draft. And I know whenever one of those goes out on Twitter, there's, like, an outrage of, like, why are you – but, like, there's usually real stuff behind those. So then like, I like to try to find out what's going on with why, you know, maybe there's a, a report about somebody having, you know, that's scaring teams a little bit or whatever. So it's just kind of going through that process. But for me, like right now, like I, I just finished an article yesterday and it was just kind of fun to look at it and try to figure out and reverse engineer a little bit, like the type of offensive tackles that have fit and done well in the, in the Shanahan scheme. And there's a story up on uh, new Orleans South football about that. Um, I think it went up this morning um, if if everyone uh, did their job is, is on schedule. I haven't actually looked, but I mean, like, it, it's just kind of like, you know, for a while I was thinking like, 
man, maybe they could take Brian Thomas at, at 14 and you get your six foot three receiver that runs a four, three, and then maybe take someone like Patrick Paul in the second round. And then you start looking at Patrick Paul and you start watching his film and you start talking to people. And then you start looking at, you know, the 10 yard splits and the three cone times of people that have had success in the, the Shanahan offense and the types of players that they've gotten rid of in Patrick Paul, all of a sudden it's like, man, I, I don't, I don't think he fits, you know, or mm. like Mims, I don't, I don't think he fits. So it's kind of just maybe trying to, to more fine tune that process and, and figure out like exactly who the players are that, that will fit this new offense. And like, for me, that that's kind of, it's kind of really fascinating to do it. Um, you know, I'm looking at the receivers and I like, for me, like blocking it is becoming a, a more important thing with it because you look at the scheme and the way some of these receivers have been used in, you know, San Fran, Miami, Houston, and you do need that element. So if they're drafting one and then you're looking at it and you got Chris Olave and Rashid Shahid out there, you kind of need somebody that that's, that can do some of the dirty work a little bit now. And I think some of that is Cedric Wilson, but if you're drafting someone, I think you want that to be part of it. And, you know, I've been looking more and more at the, uh, the fullbacks and, and, you, you know, I'm getting excited about Horvath thinking about him and how uh -huh. he can fit and yeah. and with the hands he has and, and what he might be able to do. And obviously he has to beat out Adam Prentice, but I, I think there's Slightly. potential there for him to have some of that, that, uh, use check type role. I mean, just with, with the way he was used in college and, and going back and watching that and just how sure handed he was. And, and you know, I think that's kind of exciting. So it, for me, it's it's still like the Kubiak thing, but it's kind of just like really starting to get like more more layered into it and how it's going to change their process uh, a little bit. But yeah, I mean, I think some of the guys that that were like these these giant humans that were always kind of like, well, that that's that's Jeff Ireland right there. Like he he wants the six eight, you know, three hundred and twenty pound guy. Like yeah, I think they still do, but I think that that just the package looks a little bit different now. And just kind of trying to figure that out, I, I think is is fascinating and. You know, I don't think we have all the answers yet. The draft will tell the, the story there a little bit. But, um, you know, I think it's just kind of exciting to see, like, how that thought process changes. Uh, so, Nick, <clears throat> you'll be pleased to know, uh, posted two hours ago, Saints NFL draft, which off the tackle makes most sense for New Orleans. So that's why I, there I, why I didn't see it. It's because they it, it dropped yeah. right when the show uh, started. So you can go explore that more in depth if you want to at New Orleans stuff football. Hey, everyone keeps their job for another day. That's there good. you go. There you go. Uh, so, Nick, is it more likely because receiver and tackle, obviously those are the positions of, of need and positions that we've kind of identified a lot of people that the Saints will select probably in the first two rounds. And we know the draft. It can be crazy. But is it more likely they go receiver than tackle or tackle than receiver, considering both of those positions are probably the two deepest positions in this draft? Yeah, I, I I think it's I think it's going to be tackle first. I, mm -hmm. I will put my my money on it. Um, and, and you know I think like if fashion news there, like I think that's that's someone that that would really really fit really well. And I, I think that's kind of I I think the the wish list is probably Joe Alt, Fashionu, uh, Latham, Fuaga. I think it kind of goes like that. Um, you know I think Fuaga is kind of interesting. Like he he he's the guy that if you look at it, he played the most snaps and in, in with a scheme that ran outside zone. So you can kind of look at him and see that projection more easily than I think with anybody else. Cause you kind of really have to look for the snaps with some of the other guys to see yeah. them in, in some of the run schemes that I think translate over, um, you know, fashion who had probably about 60 snaps last year. He moves really well. He has good lateral uh, ability. I just think his overall package is, is the best after Joe all, um, you know, I like Latham a lot. He's, he's built like a, a guard, but he, he, plays tackle, he moves like a tackle. That kind of makes him intriguing. And then I think Fuaga is probably the most likely one that that's there at 14 if the mocks are to be the lead. My problem with him is I feel like he's probably more a guard or a right tackle. I don't know that I see the the left tackle projection yeah. there with him. So that's kind of like a, a, a bummer, so to speak. But then at the same time you look and then it's, you know, Ryan Ramchek, he might... <sighs> Like if if I had to guess, it, like he might not play again. Like I, he, his career might be his yeah. career very possibly could be over. And you know, I think you have to prepare for that contingency. And I think we kind of all have this like mental idea of that like left tackle so much more valuable than right tackle. But I think it's kind of the same now. So yeah. I don't know if that's a, a huge problem. But if you take him on, like I think you want maybe the flexibility to to put him on, on either side. Like in, in you know, if Ramchek does come back and Penning's not ready, you can maybe move somebody or you know, vice versa. I think he's kind of just more on the right side, but I think you do go there. And then like you look at the the wide receivers second round and like you might be able to get Keon Coleman and, you know, that'd be a good fit. Big guy mm -hmm. can can make a lot of plays. Um, 
you know, I think he's kind of the opposite of what they have now. Um, you know, I think the 40 times something that you look at and, and it's a little bit like, man, four, four, six, but they have their, their big receiver, um, you know, in their prototypes, they added a big receiver prototype and it's a six, three guy. That's kind of, you know, has that special ability to, to be thrown open and all that. And I think, you know, w when you prototype him into that, I think he's a, a, a fit. So I like that. Maybe you can get Laquette or, or I'm sorry, Laquette, um, you know, maybe, uh, Adani's there, maybe, you know, Xavier Worthy, he's probably late first, but I mean, I think you can get a, a good wide receiver options at that point. Yeah, there's a lot of options. I think your options at wide receiver are better in the second round because, like, if yeah. you wait at tackle like really quickly, like you might just be looking at like Patrick Paul and Blake Fisher, and I don't know if you love the value of either one of them at, at 45. So if you're waiting and you have this like pressing need, at least with receiver, you can go out there, you can field your team, and, and you're fine. Like you put Cedric Wilson out there with those other guys, you got At Perry. You're cool. If you yeah. don't get to tackle and you get to 45 and then you got to draft someone that you're just kind of like mad on, like, yeah. I think that's how you end up in trouble. So I think you kind of got to, you know, all things being equal, you know, obviously if the receiver value is way higher when you're sitting at 14, you take the receiver. But if you got similarly uh, graded players, I think you have to go tackle first. I mean, Leggett would be somebody, I mean, speaking of kind of different receiver bodies than you have, he's not the tallest guy. He's 6'1", but he's 222 pounds. And also, I, I, and I know he played for South Carolina, and it's going to be an easy comp, but if you're coming from an offense that had Debo Samuel, played at South Carolina, does a lot of things that a receiver can do, that a running back can do, I mean, he has shown that he can be that kind of player. And if you're coming over from San Francisco, you just had an X-factor weapon like that. That's the closest thing to a Debo in this draft. I mean, that would have to intrigue Kubiak, I would think. Yeah, he, he looks like an easy fit. He does a lot of things that I, I, I think would be – he's a little bit more physical too. Like you said, he's not the biggest guy in the world, but he's a little more physical than, than – a, a lot more physical than, you know, their top two guys that they have right now. I, I'm kind of excited to see how Olave comes back. I hear he's doing more, like, weight work, and I think he made good progress last year. If he makes a little more to it, you know, I, I think that could be a big difference. But it's definitely something that, that they badly need. They need somebody that's good after the catch. You know, I've seen some of that – from him he, he's intriguing um for sure and, and like he's definitely someone that i think could be there at 45 so it's a realistic option so i just i like that i'm more excited about talking about him at 45 than i am like you know trying to fit patrick paul in into the offense and make yes. him you know yeah. be, be yeah. a fit so i think that you can get somebody that that's just more more i don't know just just better value at that position and fits it a little bit cleaner than than trying to put you know the the square peg in the round hole or whatever so i i think it's just if I'm doing it, I think that's the way it goes. I would be shocked if it goes the other direction if, you know, there are good tackles on the board at that at that spot. And I think there should be. I mean, the more quarterbacks that go early in this draft, the better it is for the Saints. You know, get them all pushed up there. Like, you know, they're, they're you know, you're seeing all kinds of names in, in the top 10 right now. And, and if that's the way it plays out and then they have their choice and like if fashion who somehow, you know, does end up falling. I think that is the absolute best case scenario for the Saints. Oh, that, that would be awesome. Um, so speaking of kind of seeing all these names floating out there, a little bit of a process question here, Nick. Last one for me, but um, you you're you you are a a very experienced journalist and have been uh, for a long time now. And uh, one of the kind of core parts of your job are managing relationships, getting information, and then sifting through what's real and what's not. And we all know that this is misinformation season. Everybody's trying to get, you know, trying to muddy the picture, if you will. So, like, what's your kind of process in terms of uh, seeing through the smoke? How, how do you try to discern what is real and what's not? You know, I've been doing this long enough that I that I just have people that I, I have gotten information from and... Mm. Over, over the course of years and you just know their, their, their money. But like when you're developing like a new source, like a lot of times I'll take things that people tell me and just not do anything with it. Just wait and see. And when you're kind of younger starting out, like you kind of feel like every single time you get something, you got to put it out because that's, that's how you build your career and, and it's a life changer. But like if you're starting out and you get something wrong, like you're buried in, yeah. I kind of had that patience early on, just, you know, I had good mentors and stuff that, that kind of told me, you know, hey, look, like not everything you get has to be reported. I mean, I I, I know more stuff that I don't report than I do report at yep. this time. And a lot of times you're looking at the value of it. And a lot of times just being able to tell somebody else something that isn't extremely valuable or that isn't going to change how the public understands things like you use that stuff to kind of have other conversations and there's a give and take to it. And 
you know, but if you're in this long enough, there's just people that you know you can trust and you have good information and it's just kind of building a track record with, with people. And if you have a new source and they tell you something that is valuable, like you got to check that with somebody else until you know that like, okay, I've talked to this guy 75 times and 75 times his information has been right. I believe it now and I'm not exposing myself at all. And look, sometimes you're going to get stuff wrong. It doesn't matter how careful you are, but I never want to, you know, put something out there where you know that you took a shortcut or you were trying to take a risk and, you know, it, it's never worth it. One story is is never enough. So it's just kind of, it's kind of knowing like if you're being played or not and you got to look at someone and you got to always think like, why are they telling me this? And if the reason they're telling you is that it might help their client, like yeah. then you might be getting played. So yeah. you just always have to think about it. Or if it's somebody that, you know, if it's if it's the team you cover and there's a player that, you know, isn't going to drop to them. And now that team is, is is telling you all this character stuff about somebody. You might want to wonder, like, what their motive is for for doing that. So I think those are the things that, that people kind of got to look at. But like, you know, especially draft draft time, like I'm usually trying to, to hit like neutral parties, like people that maybe don't have any stake in, yeah. in what the Saints are doing to find out how players are viewed and how they're graded and, and how they're stacked and because they have no reason to lie to me. Like, so I, I think just sometimes you got to work the edges. And then once you work the edges, you try to bring it back to the middle to verify some of the stuff you've heard. And it's just kind of putting together a puzzle. And the longer you do it, like the more it, it's easier to move and make sense and, and not be put in those situations where, you know, someone's using you to, to try to, to influence how a player falls or gets drafted. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I'm saying and sometimes you have the right information. It's a hundred percent factual. And then in the 11th hour, something changes and then it comes yeah. out that it's different, but it hasn't always been different. It just changed right before because that's happened plenty of times as well. And that's that, those are the kind of the frustrating ones that, you know, it's a hundred percent factual. Yeah. And then for whatever reason, right at the last minute, that information changes. It's uh, I mean, look, I don't know. And the reason why I asked that, Nick, I, I don't know that you could have had a better advertisement for why New Orleans of football is uh, worth the subscription, because I mean, that is the thought and the effort and the insight, the experience uh, that is going into bringing you everything that you read on the site or listen to or watch. Uh, Nick, thank you so much, man. Nick underscore Underhill on Twitter. Um, thank you, man, and we will speak with you again next week. All right, guys, take it easy. Take it easy. Uh, I need to go dive into that tackle article. It was not posted uh, before the show, so I, I didn't have a chance. To I am intrigued with the Saints as far as, I think, tackle and receiver, that's how you're going to go. It's going to be one, two. Unless yeah. there was a pass rusher that just absolutely fell to you, I don't think that's going to happen. But if they go receiver tackle or tackle receiver, because both of these positions, I think, are the two deepest in the draft. So you're going to have options. It just depends on who falls to you at 14. Is there a player at 11 where you're like, we have to move up? We don't want to move up, but we have to move up because that's what we do. That's what Mickey Loomis is going to do. I don't think you have to. I mean, there's tackles like all the way down in this draft. Like Javon Foster from Missouri will probably be like a fourth round pick in this draft t bob and he blocks outside zone as well as anybody now it's not the total package but as far as like the outside zone watch what him and cody schrader did together at missouri last year uh roger rosengarten somebody we talked about a couple of weeks ago from washington probably a third rounder i think he's a really good player i think he's a starter in the nfl so depending on who's there at 14 if you don't have the tackle that you love you can go receiver because there's going to be a tackle there in the 40s yeah, uh, or maybe you do both because you might need two new tackles. Uh, I mean, it's true too. E e with with uh, with the Ram chick news, we'll see. Uh, how far away we drive him? Three weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks from now. Uh, NFL draft uh, oh. going down. Ooh. What? I'm I, I'm going to the draft, oh, yeah. and I'm, I didn't yeah. even know it was two yeah. weeks away. Yeah, two weeks away. You got to leave those five kids and now two dogs behind. Uh, it's a busy household, Bo. Uh, it's not me that makes it work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, when we get back, more OTB. I guess we can finally get into spring football if we don't get distracted by tortillas and bread and everything else. More OTB coming up next. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. No, not a single person. Uh, God bless, so you. bless you. Thank you. Jesus. Well, I would, Unbelievable, you know. dude. Unbelievable. I did. What, you just wanted to wait till the mics were open to do it publicly? Yeah. Wow. Unreal. Also, I'm not going to say bless you. I'm not God. I don't have that power. Performative, even. Uh, the God is implied there.
I'm not saying I bless you. Though I am a registered minister, so I could. Sisterplumbing.org. Sisterplumbing.org. 925-8552. I can baptize Mary and Barry. You know? Uh, Sisterplumbing.org. 925-8552. You go to Sister Plumbing today for all your plumbing needs. You take advantage of 50 years of experience. Flat rate pricing. 24-7 emergency service. Licensed bond insured employees. It's your one-stop plumbing shop. Sisterplumbing.org. Uh, who baptized you? T-Bob A. Bear. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Oof. It's, it's like... It's like a theological bumper sticker. Really yeah. gonna tell everybody immediately uh, that you're probably kind of a degenerate. Two two five nine two five eighty five fifty two centralplumbing.org. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at four nine nine one zero four five. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on one zero four five ESPN Baton Rouge. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 9 9- All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What's happening, y'all? Welcome back. OTB! Look, I don't need to get any bread spurts on here uh, because thanks to Twitter, I already got the answer, and then we'll get to... uh, Spring football in a second here. Spring game going on. Uh, my guy, Jaguar alum, Guy Smiley on Twitter, hits me up with an article from, um, or it's an excerpt it's on this website, Science Direct, but it's from the Encyclopedia of Food Grain, saying uh, a tortilla is a flat, round, unfermented bread produced from wheat, flour, lime, or cooked maize, 
or lime cooked maize. Uh, so yeah, so, it's a bit, so get over it, Londra. Sorry, you um, uh, you and your parents are wrong. You know, you were raised in a house full of lies. Uh, and I don't know what to, I, I'm sorry that I had to be the one to to break that to you here on public radio. It's and, okay. Uh, random Spring Tuesday. It's okay. I just still don't see it as bread. I just don't want you to be too mad at your parents. Okay, it's so, not their fault. Don't see it as bread. Still, I think it's that. Not fault. Uh, let's get the bread conversation out of here. I think that Justin Timberlake song was from Trolls and the yeah, latest Trolls movie. That is I think a um, thousand percent what I right? associated with. And so I think NSYNC had a n- song in the newest Trolls movie. Okay, the new okay, okay, we're on song, the same thing. This is true. All right, uh, go around the room. Who was the lead singer of NSYNC? Justin, Justin Timberlake or JC? I think it was Justin. It's JC, but um, Taylor. I, I, so. I, well, I'm cheating on this. I actually just saw a thing about him. Victoria was watching it on TV, so I kind of. Are we going they, best? It was kind of focused. On, are we going on best GC. voice or no, lead no. Who's singer? The, who's the lead singer of NSYNC? I think so, it was JC Chavez, right? So Chavez? Shazay. 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 Um, I mean, look, I love Cody Rigsby. The fact Peloton. that T-Bob knew that so quick, I'm very he is, happy. He is my... Um, he ABDC. is my, if I was gay, Cody Rigsby would be kind of, I mean, he's already like a guiding light in my life in terms of how to process the world, but he talks a lot about this. And yes, he gives JC the, the, he says he has the best voice, like easily the best okay. vocalist of the group. Yeah. Um, but when you ask lead singer, I get that he can technically be the lead singer, but you would not say he's the front man. Because I use lead singer and frontman interchangeably. So in my head, Justin Timberlake, well, maybe not having the best voice, is both the lead singer and frontman of NSYNC. Oh, I don't know, man. I mean, JC got the most solos. Again, best voice. Best voice. But I think lead singer, I think of the frontman of the band. At which, again, maybe it's like a semantic no, thing. No, because you're saying like frontman, like the face of the yes, group. Yes, like the who face. Everybody, and like JT, the most recognizable. Timberlake yeah. is without a doubt the face. I could JC that. was always second fiddle again, in that regard. Again, like they were not... I didn't grow up in the end scene era, but okay. Just a question. America's best dance crew. Y'all remember that? Yeah. ABDC. With JC. Yeah. Oh, is he the host on? Ja- he I forgot the, about yeah, that. Yeah, he was one of the judges. Uh, how could I forget about the Jabberwockies, <laughs> who really parlayed that into quite a lot the of success? The Jabberwockies were awesome. They were. Don't awesome. they have like they a they residency a Vegas in Vegas? Residency okay. For yeah, a while. I don't know thought. if they still do, but they definitely did for a while. All right. Um. And as JC taught us, some girls. Dance with women. Yeah. So keep an open mind, guys. Okay. Yeah. Uh, speaking of keeping an open mind, when you go to the spring game this weekend, you probably should. In fact. It's this weekend? I'm uh, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Saturday. I mean, you kid. I, I was kind of surprised yesterday to realize it was this weekend. Uh, what are we most looking forward to? I got Look, I got a few things here. First off, um, I'm excited for DJ Chester, the new center. I want to get eyes on that. But that's not somebody that everything everybody's going to care about. Like Nobody's going to be watching that super closely. But I think we can maybe learn something there. Um, I'm excited to see if Kyron Lacey here on a stage can kind of uh, fulfill some of the 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 hype uh, that we got into yesterday, and that's been building around him. But I think probably it's actually the receiver group outside of Kyron Lacey that I find most uh, intriguing because we know Kyron's going to be the one, and looks like maybe a very good one. But what does Chris Hilton do? And even beyond Hilton. Who's that wide receiver three going to end up being? Is it Aaron Anderson? Is it C.J. Daniels, the Liberty transfer? Is it Davian Thomas, the Mississippi State transfer? How does Davian Thomas look returning kicks? Is it Kyle Parker, the guy that's not a big name but continues to get reps and get headway? Is it Shelton Sampson, the big name that's finally looking to fulfill some of that? They got Kai Pre. I mean, the list goes on and on. So that wide receiver group may be, in my opinion, the most intriguing group on Saturday. Um... It's intriguing, but I believe in that group. Like, I think there's going to be players that step up from that group. And so, uh, not the biggest question mark, but yeah, how the pecking order stacks up, considering you're bringing a player in the portal, you have a player that you're looking to go from receiver three to receiver one, you're looking for guys you've recruited to step up. So yeah, that's, it's a highly intriguing position, but you still feel, at least I feel, pretty solid in in where that position room is going to be right yeah. oh absolutely i think i think i think it's uh probably second you know just yeah. i'm jumping off the top of my head here i'd say it's second to o-line in terms of your most uh in terms of your most talented position group now a position group that i also feel pretty strong about because of who's coaching them now and because of the growth and development that i think they're going to have is middle linebacker i want to see yeah. west weeks Whit weeks greg penn harold perkins i want to see after 
15 practices with Blake Baker, who I think is one of the best linebacker coaches in the country, and obviously he's your defense coordinator as well, but what he can do at the linebacker position, what he's done for others already at this school and other schools, but certainly this school with Damone Clark, I want to see uh, probably Whit Weeks more than anybody and how they use Harold Perkins, but we're not going to see that on Saturday. Yeah, so that's, that was the problem with the Perkins. Again. He would be my answer, but uh, yeah, but again, they're like the whole thing is Perk's going to be used creatively. And spring games are anything but yeah. creative. They are the most run of the mill. Let's just play bass and kind of put on a little bit of a show and and see who plays well within those parameters. But like you ain't getting into all the mix. Like I'll be surprised. Yesterday I was reading about a pass rush group, and maybe they do this because it's not that it's not like it's hitting or anything. But a pass rush group, Jake featuring uh, it was Pear Shan and Braden Swinson in the middle, and then Deshaun Womack and uh, Harold Perkins on the edge. Like I, I'd be kind of surprised if you saw that Saturday, but maybe you would. That's an exciting pass rush group right there. Yeah, again, I don't think you'll see it on Saturday, but still, knowing they're going to work on those things, knowing you're going to see multiple things, and you're not going to just see cover three and quarters and line up in base and just continue mm. to beat your head against the same brick wall. Like Those things are exciting, but maybe we don't see that on Saturday. But I picked middle linebacker because of it being your defense coordinator's main position because of what he's done, as I said, in his past. And I – Y'all, y'all know me. I've said it before. And last year, I just didn't understand why he wasn't getting more run. I think Whit Weeks is a player that can be a star. Yeah, one of the few guys that flashed on an otherwise uh, uh, terrible defense last season. Uh, guys back there, what are y'all looking forward to Saturday? For me, it's going to be the DB room. I think that is the main position on the field where you don't know what you're going to get. I think we can all agree that right now we believe it's going to be a struggle on the defensive line, at least to kind of piece it together. Yeah, the interior, yes, for sure. DB, you don't really know. We talked about it. Major Burns is moving. That lets Sage Ryan go back to safety. I think Ashton Stamps has all the talent in the world to take that next step. P.J. Woodland's a guy you continue to hear about. Where is J.V. and Toviano? Does he continue to work at corner? Do you move him to safety? And, guys, when I was filling in for y'all last week, I had three different people on talking about spring football. All of them unsolicited mentioned Deshaun McBride, the uh, the true freshman yeah. safety. They said he's turning heads in the DB room as well as far as safety. Jordan Gilbert comes in, the A&M transfer. Yeah. He's been running with the ones a lot. I mean, I think there's a lot of talent in this room. You just got to put the right guys in the right spot. And I'm interested to see, like, who's playing where on Saturday. Uh, Elandra, you got anything you're looking forward to? Yeah, I'm excited to see uh, how this new defensive staff is gelling together. Yeah. And Blake Baker says they're doing really well, so I want to see it translate onto the field. Yeah, and and, and again, it's, it's, it's going to be kind of a tough, tough – it's always tough to discern what's what's real or what's not in a spring game. Uh, one guy, and not even much Saturday, sure on Saturday, but more even going forward – is I think Mason Taylor is poised to have a huge season. Uh, if you look at Garrett Nussmeyer, I forgot that Taylor had seven catches for 88 in the Rely Quest Bowl. Uh, didn't he also throw a touchdown to Mac Markway? Uh, that seems like a position group in uh, tight end that in the Nussmeyer version of this offense is going to take on a lot more importance. And you even had Joe Sloan talking about Mason Taylor the other day, saying he's one of the best playmakers on the team and they have to find the ways to get him the ball more. So Mason Taylor, maybe, you know, Saturday a bit, but more so even going into the season, I think going to play a massive role in making up for some of Jane Daniels' lost uh, rushing production. You're going to have to find somebody to take over that production. I yep. mean, it, it was obviously, he was your guy. He was your go-to uh, rusher. And it wasn't just, with plays that broke down. I mean, it was design quarterback runs. It was a little bit of everything. And now you have to find that. And sometimes you can find that through intermediate passes and, and find that through getting the ball out of your hands quickly. Like that can be a, an extension of the run game. We've certainly seen that yeah. in the air raid. I'm not saying this is the air raid, but, you know, passes to the tight end can take some of that load off, off of your offense. And so, you know, how much they integrate that position because we're not going to see a lot of running back either on Saturday. There's just not a lot of bodies. No. I mean, you got two guys that are going to be basically out there. The other guys, no disrespect to them, you're not going to know who they are. It's, uh, yeah, and yeah, and then Josh Williams is your one. He's not going to be out there. So we'll see, man. I'm excited for spring. You know, I, I'm excited to get out there. I'm unsure if I'm going to take the fam or not. Hopefully it's going to be beautiful weather. And uh, it's just a nice day to, to get a little taste of, of maybe what to expect come fall time. Uh, when we get back here on OTB, a couple seconds left. Come back out. One of four IVs, man.
Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. I want you to make the switch if you live in Livingston or Ascension Parish, okay? You have a choice about who handles your trash. And you should choose Trash Rangers. Why? Because they're local and there is a level of service and efficiency and just give a damn that you don't get out of the national companies that keep the trash here in Louisiana but take the profits elsewhere. You go to TrashSignUp.com and in just three minutes, uh, you see your number of cans, your days, and your prices. You make the switch. I mean, just go look online um, or, or talk to one of your neighbors who has the red can now, and they're going to... It, it's just... It, it's crazy how much better the service is. Go to Trash Rangers today. 225-401-0838 is that number. Reliable weekly service. No hidden fees and weekly text reminders. Like T-Bob said, go ahead and sign up today. TrashRangersLLC.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. your next project with John Deere deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Rack teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Brack, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. You were my sun, you were my earth, you didn't know all the ways I loved you. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Hey, y'all, welcome back, OTB. What was I going to say? Uh-oh. Um, I mean, I, I know that I want to talk about some SEC baseball as a whole, but, but I had something I was going to throw in first, but I don't know if I can remember guys. Um, so maybe we just dive in SEC baseball. 
as whole. How about this for a fun fact? Okay, so LSU uh, gonna be have uh, if you look at the after you go to Tennessee this weekend out of your final five series, how many are gonna be at home? Three of them. So a more home heavy schedule coming up here in the latter half could be good news. As right now in the SEC this season, home teams are fifty nine and twenty five. I'm at a 702 win percentage. Uh, maybe not as good news is that, well, now that you're three and nine, um, if you look at just the record that's going to be needed to maybe potentially make the playoffs, uh, it's it's at least going to be ten and eight, and you probably got to go eleven and seven. Uh, I don't when when I said it earlier and when when I keep saying that like I think they figure it out I think they get better and I think there is ample reason to think so right they're giving some of the best teams in the country all they want and getting dangerously close to winning these series they just continue to lose in these high leverage moments um, but when you couch it in those terms that becomes a lot harder to believe that that is going to happen like that does not feel great uh, but how about this. So whenever things are going bad for you, one thing you can do in life to make yourself feel better is to look at somebody else and make fun of them because it's going worse for them. Uh, Ole Miss is also 3-9. and nine, But how crazy is this? So Ole Miss wins the Natty, what, two years ago? They are now a combined 9-33 and 33 in the SEC since winning the national championship. And, of course, when they had that championship, it was at their bad season, yeah. which they were the last team to qualify. So they had this magical run through the tournament, but kind of bookended on both sides, especially now, has been just abysmal. And you got to feel that that's going to be it for Bianco, probably in Oxford, right? If this season ends like that? If, 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 if it ends, pick yeah. Up? I, gosh, it's just championships, as we know, at high-leverage programs. And Ole Miss baseball is, is one of those that, obviously, the expectation is incredibly high. You get like two years. Yeah. And then it's back to reset. And it's like, what have you done for me lately? We saw it here. We saw it here with Coach O. 33, too. Yeah. That ain't just like. That's not 500. Yeah, that's not a few games under 500. Well, that's like, 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 Limonis. Hey, okay, Limonis, I see you, bro. We thought you were dead in the water, and like, state's pretty good right now. Um, what are they third in the West? I think they're are they right about five hundred right underneath. But either way, like like Mississippi State has solidified, solidified and improved off of last year, and it looks like okay, maybe they've reversed that trend. Ole Miss, it does not appear is uh, is is doing that at all. And well, again, for everybody in the SC that's already dug a hole this deep, it, it's just going to get harder before it gets uh, before it gets better. I still can't believe Kentucky. Right now is eleven and one. I was about in the to say SEC. we talk about last Arkansas. Year. Yeah, they were. I was gonna say we talk about Arkansas. I mean, Kentucky is eleven and one as well. Mississippi State six and six, by the way. Very right similar now. work records overall. Twenty seven and three for Arkansas. Overall twenty seven and four for Kentucky. Yeah. Um, Big man Jones. Uh, oh, I forgot. Okay, yeah, Jake. To your point, you mentioned uh, Kentucky being pretty good last year. This is crazy. I did not. I forgot they had such a hot start last year as well. But Kentucky became the first SEC program to start nine and one in two straight seasons in SEC play in the last thirty-two years. So they've actually done something that quite, quite frankly, nobody else has done uh, before that. So I mean, look, you played them in postseason play a year ago. I mean, they're they're a good baseball team. Yeah, yeah. Is Kentucky now a baseball school? Everybody uh, arguing about football or basketball. True. Just saying. Maybe oh, they're man. baseball school. What do they say? We're in everything school. That's what Tennessee said. Uh, and as I told them, everything but a ring. Uh, but they are pretty good at everything. Just not good enough to, to win a championship in anything. Uh, yeah, look, Kentucky, I don't know what to tell you, man. You flew too close to the sun with all this football school nonsense. You win 10 games one time. You think you're tight. You think you're going to be like, you know, you beat LSU badly at Lexington. All your dreams are coming true, and now they're all up in flames, and nobody wants a Kentucky job. You just got told no by Alabama's coach. That is a sad state of affairs. Somewhere out there, Adolph Rupp is rolling over in his grave. Um, God, Adolph, really rough first name. Really rough. May, like, there's not a worse. Hitler, there's not a worse, right? No, I mean, no. Like... Has there ever been another human being that has just ruined a facial hairstyle 
and a name more than Adolf Hitler. Like you cannot name your kid Adolf, and you cannot have that little Charlie Chaplin mustache um, anymore. What's and that's Benito? crazy because Charlie Chaplin was super famous. Yeah, it was. What? Benito. Oh, uh, can't name your kid Benito. I, I mean, yes. Like and Lucifer no. is pretty problematic. Yeah, Lucifer for a lot of people. Is problematic, but like I don't know. But I don't I think know Adolf Benito. Is I mean, I, I get it, Benito Mussolini. I, mean, Mussolini. I know what you're saying. Pretty, no, he was no, pretty bad. No, no, he's awful. He's fascist. I understand all that, but um, I don't think. When people hear Benito, it immediately triggers the alarm bells like does uh, an Adolf. Um, there used to be an NFL safety named Hussein Abdullah. And yeah. I always thought that was very unfortunate that his name was Hussein. Certainly if you're our age, uh, that has been one that does yeah. not um, does not always always play well. But again, nobody's ever had the name and facial hair combo uh, in terms of ruining both. Um, what were we talking about? Baseball? Baseball, Kentucky. <laughs> Oh yeah, Kentucky. Yeah, ah, Adolf Rupp. Yeah. Look, I mean, they know the bit by this. If we see a squirrel in studio. We're going to mention there's a squirrel in studio. We're not going to let that slide. That's true. Yeah. All right. Uh, when we get back, let's do a little ask the bench to wrap up the show. Off the bench with Hester and T. Bob. All Star Toyota Baton Rouge. All Star Toyota Baton Rouge dot com. That's actually a great point by MD Cajun. The swastika too used to be a symbol of peace. I mean, they've really brand wrecked a lot of things. Wow. Um, Didn't know that. All Star Toyota hadn't done any of those things. Nope. Um, so you should go there for a car. Yep. Yeah. No salesperson they made off there. Toyota, not German company. Not one of those German car companies that made their fortunes off of slave labor in World War II. I'm just saying. Mm. Damn. Actually, you know what? We're probably going to get some pretty problematic waters. Our all star, it's off an of airline in Goodwood, okay? American, okay? And it's right there. It's very convenient. An incredible body shop. Great prices, whether it's new, used, or you're just leasing. Don't think too much about it. You know what? Let's just back up, erase everything that we just talked about the last two minutes, and just focus on the fact that if you need a body shop or a service center and you go into All Star and you mention OTB, you get $100. Of the deductible. You also get a free fresh estimate. You get this great lines communication with the tech line. They got the shuttle service, rental cars right there on site. Okay? It's your answer. All Star Toyota, Baton Rouge. Our listeners fire off their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499 1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Oh, by the way, we do shutters too. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. 
power up your next project with John Deere deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends. Ladies and gentlemen, huh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you. He's a friend of mine. All Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Uh, we back again, man. Uh, ass the bench. Brought to you by Cole Curse Live. Busy Art Seltzer and Blue Moon Light Sky. Citrus Sweet. Uh, we need to get some questions up in here. Also, do want to remind you, okay, if uh, you're looking to ignite your career, I would invite you. To join MMR, the largest privately owned electrical and instrumentation contractor in the entire nation. And right now, we are seeking talented individuals to join the team. For over three decades, MMR has been headquartered right here in Baton Rouge, but with offices all over the globe. And MMR offers a tailored path for both professional, professional, professional and personal development, coupled with outstanding benefits and a dynamic culture. So whether you're a student seeking internship, you're beginning your career, or you're a seasoned pro... MMR offers a variety of positions just for you. Build your future with MMR. Apply now at MMRGRP.com. Again, guys, engineers, construction managers, any of this. Go, you know, plenty of opportunity there. Go check it out, MMRGRP.com. Ask the bench. What are y'all having for lunch? Club sandwich. How can we not? I'm going to make a sandwich at home. Probably not a full club, but it'll be in that uh, in that zone at least. I don't know. What would that be if it's not a club sandwich, but it's in the zone? Just a sandwich. Without all the, I mean, I don't know. Just like lettuce, tomato, you know, lettuce, cheese, turkey, maybe some tomato, mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, some good ingredients. Um, maybe some leftover Chick-fil-A sauce <laughs> to dip it in. That's one of the ratchet things that I do is save all the sauces. Uh, I have we have a sauce drawer in yeah. our refrigerator. It's the best. Yeah. Ask that guy's the bench who's going to the spring game. I am. I'll probably take the crew out there. I told Taylor he's not allowed to go. You know, it's actually wanna, funny. I'm, I'm, I'm actually not going. Yeah, I know. I told you you weren't allowed to. No, it's my mom's birthday. <laughs> Imagine. I mean, I know I wanted to go. I was like, can you move it to a different day? Yeah. Apparently, birthdays don't work like that. I mean, come on, dude. Tell your mom you work for a sports show. What are you doing? Uh, hashtag ask the bench. If you could have, would you have traveled a great distance to see the eclipse yesterday? No. Unfortunately, no. And that sucks. I like space and I like science stuff, but I don't know. No. Ask the bench. Ryan Reynolds or Ryan Gosling? Uh, Ryan Reynolds to Ooh. hang with. Ryan Gosling is a better actor. Uh, I would talk footy with Ryan Reynolds. Probably fair. Though, to be fair, Ryan Reynolds doesn't ever, you know, he's he's more of a comedic actor, right? And he's damn good at that. He is. It's just that he's if good. you're a dramatic actor, we call you better. But, like, is Ryan Gosling better at being dramatic than Ryan Reynolds yeah, is at being comedic? Ryan Gosling's pretty funny, Ryan too. Gosling was really he funny, funny yeah, and uh, Crazy Stupid point. Love. Yeah, yeah. Reynolds, yeah. Reynolds is hilarious. Oh, like, I, th I think he's a really funny actor. Plus, if I hung out with Ryan Reynolds, might get to meet Blake Lively, so I'll go with Ryan Reynolds. Um... I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go with my gut. My gut says Reynolds. Hashtag Ask the Bench. Going to Peru next week. Should I try to go to Machu Picchu? 
Uh, Ask them what they think about tortillas. Thing I know about Peru uh, is soccer, and in Sweeney Todd, he sings about the mountains of Peru. But yeah, you should definitely try to go to Machu Picchu. I mean, that's a what does that evolve into? A Raichu with a thunderstone. Sorry, you should, you should go to on. you should go to Machu Picchu. Um, LSU is currently three and nine in SEC play with eighteen games remaining. Predict our final record in the SEC. I'm feeling like thirteen and seventeen. Okay, uh, and then you're probably gonna need a couple wins in the tournament to, to make the postseason. God, that's crazy that. The hole is so big that that's the goal now is make the postseason. What a bummer. Uh, at Tennessee, at Missouri, Auburn at home, A&M Okay, at Auburn's home, awful this year. They're Alabama, 2 and 10. Ole Miss at home. Um, it's going to get easier. You just got to fall through. Ask the bench, favorite Godzilla or King Kong movie? I've actually never loved one of either, if I'm being honest. Kong Island was great. Yeah, the Peter, the Peter Jackson, lot. King Kong. That was I, good. I, yeah. I, dude, I did not like that. That was so crazy because I was so hyped coming off of Lord of the Rings. I didn't like it. I remember back in the day. Now, have I rewatched it since theaters? <laughs> no, but I remember kind of enjoying it. I've only seen it once. Maybe I would end up liking it, was it more. Skull Island, the name of the yeah. King Kong? Oh, yeah, that's Island, good. Yeah. I like that one. That was good. Um, Apple TV had a, um, a good series. Kind of off of that movie. I tried an episode of it. I didn't. It wasn't for me, but I've heard very good things about it. A lot of people really like it. I really got to see Godzilla minus one. They just won't put it out on the stream yet. Uh, ask the bench if for some miracle. JJ McCarthy, Drake May fell to you. Who would you want the Saints to get? Jenny McCarthy. What you say? Uh, Drake, Drake May, and JJ McCarthy. Uh, if I was the team selecting, I would go JJ McCarthy. I have no moment for you for Drake May. I have yep. no moment. I have not one college moment where I'm like. Hey, here it is. That's why I would select him. Bad corner advice, Alondra, drop and win. Today, tonight. Tonight? Yeah. Preview a little Louis C300. We'll see you Wednesday. Off the bench with Hester and T Bob. Rejuve me medical. Rejuve me medical.com. Restore me, refuel me, rejuve me. Uh, you want to fight the effects of untreated aging? Treat the effects, I should say. Um, you want to rejuvenate that youthful, energetic feeling they used to have. Well, guys, that's what Rejuven Me does. They're the age of fine clinic. So go in and get your labs drawn. Get that free consultation. Let your body be the guide to customizing a plan for you to get you where you want to be. And I don't care if you're 20, 30, 40, 50, male, female, whatever. They can put together a plan for you. Okay. Metairie, Baton Rouge, Slidell, Shreveport, and now Monroe as well. Rejuven Medical. All throughout the state of Louisiana, as T-Bob just pointed out there. So if you're listening to us, we are talking to you because we're throughout Louisiana. And so is Rejuve Me Medical. They can help you get to whatever that question is. They're going to get to the bottom of it. They're going to help you out, but you don't know unless you get that consultation set up. RejuveMeMedical.com. Expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra.